Ladies and gentlemen, our showcase tonight is being presented by Oakleaf Village Elementary School. Paula Summers is their music teacher. I think you're really going, going to enjoy this.
Okay. Yeah. I'm going to... I'm sure to go down the presenter steps. Oh, okay. I'm going to reverse the order because Matt's running late. Whoops, wait a minute. I didn't call the meeting to order. Our invocation tonight will be led by Pastor Reese Edwards, Senior Chaplain at Orange Park Medical Center, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, Father, we, uh, we always come to you with a thankful heart. Lord, we thank you for those students tonight that has blessed our hearts with their music, talents, and abilities. And Lord, we thank you for the board, each member of our board, our superintendent. Lord, we thank you for our teachers. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, for the positive impact and the investment they make in our students. Continue to bless us, bless this meeting tonight with harmony and unity as they discuss the business to better serve our students. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 <clears throat> okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Clay County School Board meeting, April the 4th, 2019, will come to order. I'd like to welcome citizens of Clay County. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend tonight's school board meeting. This meeting is our opportunity as your elected representatives to collaborate openly and make decisions that will decide the future direction of our public schools and the education of our children here in Clay County. If you wish to address the board, there will be an opportunity to speak for three minutes. Please fill out a card, which you will find located in the back of the room, indicating the specific item number or topic you wish to speak about and turn it in promptly. No additional cards will be accepted once the board moves to the punk public comment section under presentations from the audience. Your participation is welcomed and appreciated. Uh, I'm going to reverse the first two items uh, uh, at a, the request of one of them. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, check presentation to Charles E. Bennett Elementary, Felicia Hampshire, and then I understand Ms. Caracas is going to go down and present. Ms. Felicia? Thank you, Madam Chair. Before we do the presentation of the check for Charles E. Bennett, we have a celebrity among us. And I, I actually wrote a bio, but instead, if you don't mind, I'm going to read what's on this plaque. So um, we all know Felicia as the former mayor of Green Cove Springs, Mayor Hampshire. I know her as Flea. And when she called um, me and said that she had talked to somebody and they wanted to donate money to Charles E. Bennett, I said, gosh, you're always working for our children. You're always looking out for kids and doing what's in the best interest of them. And um, you just continue to impress me. So Felicia is one of the um, 26th annual Florida African American History Calendar honorees. And um, there's a poster. She's on it. I'm guessing she's, what month are you? <laughs> June? <laughs> But more importantly, I wanted to present you with this beautiful plaque. And I'm going to take the time to read it, if that's OK, Madam Chair. Honorable Carmina Felicia Hampshire, trailblazing servant leader. Born and raised in the beautiful city of Green Cove Springs, the Honorable Felicia Hampshire became the city's first African-American female mayor in 2009. She faithfully served the community she loves as a member of the city's commission from 2006 to 2014. The proud daughter of Lily Jean Sanders, who is deceased, and William P. Plummer, who reside in Durham, North Carolina. Ms. Hampshire had her first experience in the civil rights movement when she was moved from the all-black R.C. Bannerman Elementary School to the integrated Charles E. Bennett Elementary School at the age of seven. 
Well, I'm getting chills, Flea. Uh, uh, while it was a very confusing time for Felicia, she learned an important lesson from her parents' de decision, one which served as a driving force behind her commitment to equity and excellence. All children deserve a quality education. And I believe that's what we do here in Clay County. A member of the Florida Education Association, she previously, ser previously served on the executive cabinet and was also a member of the program and policy council for the American Federation of Teachers in Washington, D.C. She is the former president of CESPA, Clay, education, uh, Clay County Education Support Professional Association, the local 7409 from Clay County, and for six years served as the NEA Board of Directors member for the National Education Association in Washington, D.C., where she lobbied on behalf of public education. Currently, she's serving as the Southeast Region Director for the National Council of Education Support Professionals in Washington, D.C., which covers Florida, Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Louisiana. She has traveled the country and has gone as far as Germany, participating in workshops and conferences and sharing the importance of protecting the rights of all children to receive a fair and quality public education. Married to Clarence Hampshire, senior for 38 years, this proud wife, loving mother of five, and grandmother of seven, is also the founder of the Green Cove Springs Soul Food Festival, which is held each year on the first Saturday in October. The festival, now in its 18th year, not only brings some of the most talented performers to the small Florida city, but offers its residents an opportunity to showcase their culinary talents. Ms. Hampshire majored in English at Betham Cookman College, which is now Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach, where she attended on a basketball scholarship. She also studied at Santa Fe Community College in Gainesville, Florida, where she received her certificate for, to a certification to teach Head Start for the Putnam and Clay Head Start programs in Green Cove Springs, Florida, and St. John's River Community College in Doctors Inlet, Florida. She's a member of the Lord's Church Ministries in Jacksonville, Florida, where she's active in many church functions, including singing in the chorus. So you are the 2019-20, from the 26th anniversary, Florida Black History Month honoree. Congratulations! <laughs> wow, I'm so proud of you. Wow, I mean... You just continue to amaze me in everything you do. Thank you for, not only is she an advocate for the community and our children, she's one of our own district staff and um, continually looking out for everyone. We appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so that was really a surprise. Um, <laughs> I, um, I'm very elated to be here. I'm very honored and humbled. Um, if my, you, you need my name and address and all that stuff. You don't? Okay. Felicia, right. I think we all know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> if you will allow me, I've written something that I think falls right into line to the presentation tonight and also um, somewhat of a tribute to the Clay County School District <clears throat> and in particular Charles E. Bennett Elementary. I'm not sure if the principal is here or not. Okay, I'm gonna need her to come up with me <laughs> and when she gets a second. I've never met her, but when we spoke on the phone the other day, I knew that the Lord made the right decision in this check going to Bennett. <clears throat> Good. Now, I'm gonna have to talk for just a second, so you gotta stand with me, because I'm very nervous. Everybody knows me, I'm shy, so. <clears throat> Oh, Felicia. <laughs> Good evening, Superintendent Davis, Board Chairman Carol Studdard, Vice Chair, and distinguished school board members and staff. And a special hello to the principal, Ms. Sarah Lawson of Charles E. Bennett Elementary, her students and staff, and to my supervisor who's here, Daryl, in the back over there. And last but not least, to my hubby, Clarence, who's in the audience. It gives me great pleasure to have this opportunity to give back to my community. While attending a conference in Las Vegas a few weeks ago, I had an opportunity to share my story. Well, I guess you asked what story? <laughs> Well, I'm glad you asked what story. So everyone has a story, but my story has a lot to do with why I'm here tonight and how Charles E. Bennett plays a very huge role. 
But before I do that, I want to say thank you to Janice for such a wonderful introduction. She's always been a really good friend, and I really appreciate that. Also, fortunately for the students who attend Bennett and who will be the recipients of this gracious gift, my story will help the very elementary school that I attended as a child during integration back in 1967. And I'm sure many of you are not old enough to remember integration or even 1967. But before I share my story, let me tell you about a gentleman and the foundation who blessed us with this special gift. I met a gentleman, his name is Jim, while attending this conference in Vegas. He himself has a very intriguing story that would bring tears to your eyes about his own personal life and his amazing zeal to help and heal others through love and support. Jim Sporletter is his name, and he has dedicated the next chapter of his life to assisting schools become more trauma-informed and centers of healing. <coughs> Please forgive me, I'm still dealing with the after effects of bronchitis. After 33 years as an educator, and most recently as principal of Lincoln High School in Walla Walla, I guess that's Washington. She said she knew where that was. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Jim and his staff's pioneering work was documented in a movie called Paper Tigers. I'm not sure if many of you have ever heard of it, but please check it out on Netflix. So when you have some downtime, it'll bless your heart. Most recently, Jim, along with Heather Forbes, published an implementation guide for administrators and school personnel. The manual is designed to provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to turn any building into a trauma-informed school. Trauma has a lot to do with my own personal story. And I almost just kind of choke up when I have to tell it. But my friend Jim told the story about a little boy who came to class every day itching and scratching his right hand until it bled. The teacher kept asking the child, why are you scratching so much? The child wouldn't respond to the teacher. So every day the teacher placed the child in a little timeout space because she wasn't quite sure what was going on with him. One day the child broke. And he yelled, we are poor. We are poor. We have no money. We are hungry. We live in our car. We don't have anywhere to bathe. Please don't tell mommy. They will take us away. Well, my friends, I was that little boy in theory who was a little girl built up with frustration and trauma at the age of seven, helping my single mom to raise three siblings younger than me at the time. When my mom had to be at the crab factory in St. Augustine at four o'clock in the mornings, I was left at home with the responsibility of taking care of my siblings to school, to take them to school, since we were all very close in age. All three went over to either a friend's or kindergarten. I was the kid standing on the bucket in the kitchen, trying to cook grits, oatmeal, or whatever it was that my mom could afford to feed us. I was that kid <coughs> that I, once I got, uh, I'm sorry, I was that kid that once I got to school from Palmetto Avenue to Charles E. Bennett, and by the way, there was no bus for me. I walked almost two miles as a seven-year-old, I was traumatized by all of this. I was a kid who was laughed at because my hair wasn't combed. Children do remember things. We have to be re really careful of how we treat children and talk to them. And I remember everything. I remember how I was treated by my peers, other teachers, etc. It didn't matter if I got to school late because I was smart. <laughs> I could catch on easily, and besides, no one seemed to care. Really, all that I was thinking about was getting to school in time for lunch. I wanted the lunch rolls, which the cafeteria lady would give me, and she would give me two because she knew. 
I know that this might surprise you, but the two children that I will never forget, one being an employee here, she was Sheila Gann. She was my best friend. She still treats me like a sister to this day. There was a second grade photo where you would see Sheila, a kid named Carl Schultz, and Jody Foster. Here's the picture. <laughs> I didn't know she had it. Oh, my. I don't have one, so. Oh, God. Okay. Stop. <laughs> okay. We were all best buddies. Mr. Ray Jenner was my principal, right. who is still alive and well to this day. Mr. Jenner thought he was going to paddle me one day for something I didn't do because a cute little blonde-headed, blue-eyed girl said differently, but he didn't know my mama. I love Mr. Jenner to this day. We are very good friends. Gloria and Jim Ganey will forever be in my heart. Miss Ganey was that second grade teacher. A very traumatic time in my life turned out to be one of the most rewarding times in my life, but my mother she made the right choice. Attending Charles E. Bennett taught me resilience. Who would ever have thought that this little dark-skinned girl who was looked down upon, talked about, would one day become the mayor of a city called Green Cove Springs and serve on city council for nine years? I'm sure that there is a Felicia Spencer at Charles E. Bennett, along with her peers, who will greatly benefit from this gift from the Phoenix Foundation. I was sure that the right choice had been made once I spoke with the principal on Monday. It was both rewarding and a confirmation from above. Lastly, I just want to say thank you to the superintendent, Janice Karakis, for asking me to make this presentation tonight. I also want to say thank you to all of the support staff, the cafeteria cooks, the custodians. And although I didn't have a bus driver or a bus to ride on, I always wanted to ride the big yellow bus one day. And now I work for the department. <laughs> <laughs> and if Daryl lets me, I'll get on the bus again. With some, I work with some amazing people who have the same goal in mind, and that is to take care of our precious cargo. Thanks for allowing me this opportunity to share. And now, if the chairman of the board, the superintendent, or, or all of you, if you would like to come down along with the principal, I would like to present this check to Charles E. Bennett Elementary School for $1,000. Sheila Gann, you should have been in that picture, too. Yeah. 
Now we'll just pass the Kleenex. Oh my goodness, what a story. Oh, that's, wow. I don't even know where to go from there. Okay, our next uh, presenter is Matthew Hutchins, a check presentation to the Clay Education Foundation. And I assume there are other foundation, okay. Good afternoon or good, good evening. <clears throat> uh, my name is Matthew Hutchins. I am the uh, president and chair of the Clay County Education Foundation. Um, and first and foremost, before we present um, the check, um, I do want to, we, we got some tremendous changes going on at the Education Foundation this year that we are really, really excited about. And one of the biggest changes that we have is we have a new executive director and Michaela Buchanan, who has joined the uh, um, board and uh, as a, a school board employee as well. So um, we're really excited to have her on board. And um, I can tell you just from the couple months that she's been here, the impact that she's had on the foundation and the connection she's made in the schools has been tremendous. And it is just, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be part of this foundation. I, I mean, I, I think I'm going on six or seven years and I am so excited about the next level that's going to happen with Michaela being on board. So I want to thank the school board for that. I want to thank Michaela for the outstanding work she's already done in, in, her, in her start with us. And then we also want to make a, a check presentation um, to the Education Foundation. And this was um, this is this is the work that the foundation does, and it, it's um, it's it's fifteen thousand dollars. However. This wasn't from one source. This was working in conjunction with other nonprofits and other companies to help support education and students in Clay County. This specific funds were sourced from Wells Fargo Bank, which I am employed at. I'm a regional district manager at Wells Fargo. Um, we worked in partnership with the MOSH and the STEM2 hub of Northeast Florida where we were able to take $10,000 from Wells Fargo Bank. We were able to match it from the STEM2 hub to turn it into $20,000. We were then able to distribute this out to education foundations in the seven counties. And those foundations were able to use matching grant dollars from the state of Florida to turn it into $40,000. And all of these funds will be going directly to students um, and, and teachers. And 15,000 of that will be going to Clay County. So we're really excited about that. So on behalf of the Education Foundation, we'd like to present this check. Okay. You wanna... I'd like to draw your attention to the artwork along our wall tonight. Uh, this comes from Oakleaf Village Elementary, who also did the showcase. And uh, Michelle Levinson is the art teacher. Are you here? <laughs> this is the night for your school. I mean, everything's coming from your school. Uh, Presenters, the Player Center for Child Health at Wolfson Children Hospital, Mira V. Wright, Lead Community Outreach Coordinator.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I just want to start my presentation saying that I don't bring a check. So I don't want to disappoint anyone. Now, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, then you must just sit down. I know, right? We're as bad as checks. Anyway, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you tonight. Um, I am Marie B. Wright, the Lead Community Outreach Coordinator for the Player Center for Child Health at Walson Children's Hospital. And I'm also the co chair for the Infant Mortality Task Force and Substance Exposed Newborn Group. So the presentation that I'm gonna do uh, for you today, hopefully can give you an idea of what's going on in the community and with our children. So I am going to go right away to some of the information that I think is gonna be more relevant to you. Um, I'm gonna talk very briefly about infant mortality rate. And I am gonna tell you that infant mortality rate is what we use to measure the health of a community. So that's what I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna share that with you. I'm gonna talk briefly about the health of mothers in Clay County, and then we're gonna focus on children and adolescents, because that's what is important for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, the infant mortality rate in Clay County and the Northeast Florida area is actually higher than the infant mortality rate of the state of Florida. So that is something that we need to look at. Is that a healthy community? Probably not as healthy as we would like to see. But if we see the reason why we're losing our babies, the reasons are things that can be prevented. Sometimes there are injuries, sometimes there are congenital mal malformations, sometimes these babies are being born too soon, sometimes they are low birth weight. So there is something that we can do to prevent these things. But other things that we are seeing too is the amount of babies that are exposed to substance abuse, to substance. The moms are abusing substances, mm -hmm. and what we see now is babies in the NICU and the numbers keep increasing. We need to do something because that, those are your future students. And eventually you will see them in the school system. We see children that are victims of sexual abuse. And you have some numbers right there. I'm not gonna go into the numbers because I know we only have five minutes to discuss all these things. But when you look at the things that the moms are going through, I'm not surprised to see what the babies are saying, right? So we have moms that are obese, so now that is gonna put you at a higher risk for, cer for certain um, uh, conditions that your baby are gonna suffer now. We see moms that are entering prenatal care very late or not entering prenatal care at all. So now we have kids that are born with a disease that could have been prevented. And now when they are three years old, you're gonna see them. We have uh, moms that are using and abusing substances, and that's a big problem that keeps growing in Clay County. So I want to introduce you to the future parents in your community. And these are your adolescents. These are the kids that you have now at school. So kids between zero to 21. If you look at the slide and you see the line that has the little circles, that's Clay County. The line that is blue, that is Florida. That is the suicide death rate for kids age to 21. Look at your numbers. Look at Clay County. Look at Florida. That is pretty scary right there. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. These are the numbers of hospitalizations for mood and depressive disorders. The circle again, the dark line, that is Clay County. The blue one is Florida. And it keeps going up. Look at these STDs. I only wanted to focus on gonorrhea because gonorrhea can be passed to a baby. So now you can have a blind baby. So now let's look at this. We are finally lower than Florida, but guess what? The trend keeps going up. Our numbers keep, keep going up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip this one because I have one that is a little bit better. Look at vaping and look at, at alcohol. When you look at vaping, our young kids, they think that it's not a big deal. Vaping is nothing. It's not addicted. It's okay to vape. But guess what? Some studies are saying when you have a child that starts vaping or a, a young man or a young woman that starts vaping, and they are doing it for about six months, now they cannot sit at school for the amount of hours that they have to be at school because they have an addiction now. They want to get out. They need to vape. They need to leave their room. That's a big problem for you because it's not, it's not a behavior that is not going to show that doesn't have consequences. It has consequences. When you look at alcohol, look at that number. Again, we are higher than the state of Florida. This is Clay County. This is what you're dealing with. And this translates in kids that are going to miss school Kids that are usually, when you abuse one substance, you start using other substances too. So you're gonna see that the circle keeps going. The numbers keep getting higher and higher. 
So I am bringing this to you as a concerned professional, as a concerned mom, as a concerned member of the community. I am not the only one that is concerned. And this presentation and this group is um, a presentation that is done and a, a group that is working as a, if I can say, a collaborative effort of many community partners in the community. Many agencies working together, looking at these numbers and say, what are we gonna do? Because eventually these kids are gonna enter the system. Some, already, some are already in the system. What are we gonna do to make a difference? And we bring a suggestion to you. We really, really want you to please implement the HOPE program. And this program, as some of you may be familiar with, it's a program that is gonna focus in certain skills. What we want, we're teaching the kids English, we're teaching math, we're teaching science, but there are many kids that don't have the skills that they need to be in this world today. So we want a curriculum that can teach our kids, how do you make a decision? How do you set a goal? How do you communicate when you are in a relationship? How are you gonna access health information that is valid to you? So you can be a healthy mom, dad, brother, sister, student, how are we going to teach them to advocate for themselves and to self-manage themselves? When we teach them that, we can move to the next thing and say, okay, this is now, these skills that you have, apply them to your mental health, to your nutrition, because guess what? You're taking care of yourself. If one day you are a mom, you're not going to be obese because you're taking care of yourself. We're talking about physical fitness, substance use and abuse. We have to teach them, these kids, a way to live that is healthy because we need a healthier community. Right now, what we have is not looking good and Clay County has a problem. So my suggestion to you and my plea to you, along with many other agencies that are here sitting uh, with us, we have Andrea Hepford, Hepburn from um, Orange Park, Park Medical Center, Erica Winkle from the health department, Lisa Rogers from the health department, Courtney Ellis from the health department, Irene Toto, Clay Behavioral Health, Shelly Ladder with Clay County School District, Christine Parker from the Quigley House, and many, many other agencies. We have DCF, we have many agencies that attend our meetings. We have the March of Dimes. Um, we want to please ask you to consider a comprehensive, comprehensive health education course in your curriculum because we are in desperate need of that. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Do you, do, any questions from the board? Okay. Did you want to say anything, Mr. Davis? No, thank you so very much. Uh, I agree that there's a lot of factors that we have to address as a community. And I think holistically that we have to be, A, to be able to willing to identify that there's a problem and uh, but also identify that there are strategies to help coach children and students to make the right decisions as they transition through life. I do. I'm familiar with the HOPE curriculum. It's a it's a sound, solid curriculum that exposes students to many facets of of decision making and and, and they have the opportunity to apply best practices. So um, we'd be willing to um, to have more conversation through my assistant superintendent of curriculum instruction, Mr. Connor and figure out uh, if and when we can look at making this fit within our organization so just to learn more. Please do, and feel free to reach yes, out if you have any questions, if you want to look at more data. I yes, know it's that is a reality yeah. called budget, no. right? Yeah, and yeah. teachers that you will yes, need and all of that, but we are here to help. Yes, ma'am, and, and thank you for your time and all I'm your support factors you brought this evening. We know you didn't have a check, but we take credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> thank just you Just kidding. So thank you. We thank you for your energy and your, thank and your information. Thank you, Ms. Wright. It's kind of scary when you see those charts. Um, that that kind of got my attention. I think it did the board. Um, mm. Okay, S school showcase. Boy, is tonight the night for Oak, Oak Leaf Village, Village Elementary School. They've been great. Tracy Kendrick, principal. This is your night to shine, yes, if is. you'll introduce your cohorts. I will. Thank you to Mr. Davis and to the board for allowing us the opportunity to present some special things about OVE at this meeting. Thank you to my amazing music teacher, Paula Summers, um, who you heard some of my... 
favorite music. Um, and thank you to Miss Payne and Miss Gilliam, who are my moral and perhaps technical support, um, <laughs> because it does make me a little nervous to get teed up here and talk to all of you. So um, we can. Yeah. OVE added sixth grade this year, as you all know, and that pushed our enrollment well over a thousand students. OVE, to give you a little history, was built at the same time as Plantation Oaks in 2007, and OVE opened up in 2008. Last year, 2018, we had an anniversary. Go ahead. Um, we had a big celebration. All of the students in our entire school got together. We put together a time capsule. Um, Miss Levinson worked together for this big birthday candle that is on our wall in our school, and we, we intend to um, add candles as the time goes on. Um, we're going to open that time capsule at a much later date, like in a decade. So we hope we remember that we have it when we get ready to <laughs> open it. So as you've noticed, the arts program at OVE is very strong. Paula Summers wrote grants last year and created a piano lab where she is teaching students how to play the piano. There's a great deal of research that indicates that when students learn to read music, it also improves their math abilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, our art program has been improved by Ms. Levinson, who you've met. Um, she did some grant writing of her own, and she has added a kiln to our school. Cool. So now students are learning to create pottery. They're very excited about this, um, and the adults were a little excited about it, too. Um, our resource department continues to support school goals through our reading resource class, otherwise known as drama. Ms. Elrod gives students a new way to practice their reading skills through the use of scripts and Reader's Theater. Ms. Baxter, our technology teacher, and Ms. Roberts, our media specialist, assist with the teaching of STEM skills and coding and robotics. Our entire campus participated in Hour of Code this year, including myself. In the past three years, um, every grade level has used a set time Okay, make sure it's the right slide. <laughs> to provide enrichment and remediation, which many grades call skills block. We are closing the gap and raising proficiency levels through the use of daily small group intervention targeting weaknesses of individual students. When students reach their personal goals for reading, math, or maybe behavior, teachers send the students to me, I give them a pencil, and we take a picture together. Um, we then post those pictures on Facebook, and I will tell you that um, the kids are very competitive. They will run me down. They will find me. It's time to take a picture. <laughs> so we, we, we appreciate that. Um, one of the students in this picture, Amy, um, she has set a personal goal for herself. She is the biggest Achieve 3000 Lexal gainer in our school. She wants to be a veterinarian when she grows up, and she realized her 900 Lexile was not going to work for her. She is now at a 1400 Lexile. Wow. She made that progress in one year, and as she told me, she just realized that she wow. needed to get serious and work on this, and she did. <laughs> so um, we're very proud of her. Um, so this has been our first year with sixth grade. And we hired teachers from all over the country. They had various backgrounds and, and histories and skills, and it's made an interesting um, team for our sixth grade. This team has not support, disappointed us. They have worked closely together, and they have helped these students reach high academic goals as well as many social goals. Students have published math books. They have completed service projects, and I am going to hate to send them to the junior high. In fact, I, I threatened them all at lunch earlier this week that I was going to retain them all. Oh. <laughs> One of the things that um, this faculty is known for is their caring heart. Several years ago, we lost one of our pre-K students to cancer. Coach Woolwine has since started a Wyatt Morrison Scholarship Fund that is funded by our faculty. We give several high school seniors who previously have attended OVE a $1,000 scholarship every year. Teachers have been working very hard this year to plan vertically in order to streamline our ELA instruction. 
our ELA data has been um, improving since we implemented SIPS, which is a phonics program, and our targeted LLI instruction. Upper grades are vertical planning and using DBQs and Achieve 3000, as well as strong classroom libraries to push kids into upper Lexile levels. Most teachers are providing before and after school tutoring so that they can assure that all students make gains. Math, nope, <laughs> math is another strength of OBE. Most math teachers are Intel trained and through the knowledge gained during the training and the implementation of Eureka, we have reached many of our math goals. We expect to have even higher achievement this school year and we're very proud of those teachers and students. And so it's great to be an OBE Explorer. Thank you. Very good. Fantastic. Boy, music, art, kids, we, we, we want to be the whole teachers. <laughs> I mean, you've got it all. Right. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair, can I say that? Ms. Ms. Kendrick. Ms. Kendrick, Ms. Gillum, Ms. Payne, thank you for your leadership. Thank you. I was had a chance to walk classrooms the other day, and uh, you know, I see great things going on with kids. Kids are authentically learning, and teachers are working hard. They know their content. And I think you got some teachers here today. You raise your hands. Thank you for what you do every single day. You do great things, and um, continue to do great work. So. Thank you for being here. And Thank if you, you ever need any stories about uh, Miss Payne, <laughs> see me afterwards. And and, and and through the chair, Miss Kendrick talked about the young lady. I think it was Amy, the student. The fourteen hundred Lexile score is equivalent to eleventh and twelfth grade reading ability. So, fifth grade. Fifth. So that's uh, I mean, that's amazing. Rock star. Awesome. Very good. Wow. Boy, this meeting's getting off on a great start. Okay. Um, this is the last call for comment cards. If there's anyone who wishes to address the audience, if you would give your card to uh, Chief Wagner. That's my Dan Stanley guy. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Yeah, that Okay, we'll start with our uh, public comments. Uh, the, uh, I ask that each speaker, uh, when you come up, if you would state your name and address for the record. The first is Patricia Schaefer. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Patricia Schaefer and my address is on file. Okay. Tonight you'll be voting on a contract with, um, in regards to curriculum associates who are the owners of iReady Learning Systems. The new contract is roughly an additional $1 million. I'd like to know besides our students' answers to the curriculum questions, what other data is being collected? Are there any psychological or emotional based questions on these programs? If so, how is this information being used? Who has access to this information? How will this data that is collected on our children be used in the future? Could it jeopardize their acceptance into college, future employment, et cetera? Is the data that's being collected on our students sold to any third parties? If so, who is it sold to and for what reason? Is there a price on our child's data? Also, reading over um, associate curriculum's own website, why are te 
VAM scores tied to iReady. In the associate curriculum associate's own material, it doesn't say that's what it's supposed to be used for. Um, also tonight, why are you taking a vote tonight on upcoming curriculum for the 2021-22 school years and 22-23 school years when Governor DeSantis has always, already put you on notice that he's changing the standards? Wouldn't it be best served to put that vote off until we know what the standards are? Also, after reading the surveys attached to the agenda in regards to new curriculum for next year, why did you choose to go against the wishes of so many? Yesterday, the education budget passed the Florida Senate with a 40 to 0 vote. In this budget, there will be an additional roughly $68 million of funding provided to pay for one school resource officer per school across our county. Why are you continuing the formation of a police department when the state is giving you funding for these officers? Why not continue with CCSO and use the millage increase to harden our schools and make up some of the $300 million in improvement and building of new schools that this county needs? Where's the fiscal responsibility that we all talk about? Speaking of fiscal responsibility, when is an actual cost analysis of the school district PD going to be provided? When will a proposed budget be available? And as far as of the last school board meeting, it was stated that there isn't one available. Is there one now? My question becomes, how do you know you'll be cheaper than Clay County Sheriff's Office? Also, when do the taxpayers of Clay County get any of their questions answered? Because it sure doesn't happen here. We can't speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. We can't speak to you in groups. How do we, the taxpayers get our questions answered? Thank you for the time. The next speaker is Amy Smith. Okay. Hi, my name is Amy Smith and my address is on file. I'm here to speak today because bargaining is coming up. I would like for y'all to think about what the pay in transportation is compared to other counties. Bus drivers in our county start out with no experience at $12.92 an hour. St. John's County starts out at $13.57 an hour. Transportation fights every day to hire new drivers. But in order to keep them and the ones you have from going to other counties, we need to raise in our pay scale to stay competitive with the counties like St. John's. In order for some drivers to make 25,000 a year, they have to do field trips, summer school, and anything else. We aren't complaining about field trips or summer school, but because summer school only needs a few drivers, you have drivers struggling to find outside jobs during the summer. Please give all this information consideration before bargaining. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Smith, what did you give me the number again on St. John's? St. John's is thirteen fifty-seven. Thirteen fifty-seven, no, and ours no is twelve. I did it on both of them with no experience. Excuse me. I did both of them with no experience. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the next speaker is Wanda Clymer. Good evening. My name is Wanda Clymer and my address is on file. Wait a minute. This is hers, not mine. She used my book. Oh, dear. Let's change the page. Okay, I come to you tonight as a CESPA representative and a support employee. I'm here to, talk, to discuss the cost of our ever-rising insurance before you meet with the bargaining team. I looked at my own paycheck stubs and went back five years to compare the increase of our insurance. And this is for a single person because I am not married. In 2015, the cost for single coverage was $63.30 a month. 2016, you had $115.22. In 2017, 
In 2017, we had our only decrease, which was $97.50 a month. 2018, 158.94. 2019, 167.44. Now, this year, the big difference was if you smoked and you filled the application outright, you also got an extra $50 added to that, which comes out to $217.44. And if you're an employee with a spouse, not children, with a spouse, you're paying $888 a month. Employee and spouse? Yes. And in October, we will endure another increase in our insurance of 19.5%. We can't afford it anymore. We have employees opting out of insurance so they can keep home food, and electricity. Employees love working here for a reason. We want to keep them working here, but they can't afford the health insurance. So they're opting out of health insurance and taking a chance they may never get sick. So we ask that you take into consideration all the information I've given you. Look over this hard and see if there's any way you can redo some of the budget to find more money to put on employees insurance. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, Lynn Sparks. My name is Lynn Sparks. My address is on file. Please bear with me. I'm not much of a public speaker unless you count driving down Blanding at 45 miles an hour, <laughs> speaking over about 60 children who are letting off steam after getting out of school. Oh I'll try not to yell at you the way I do them. <laughs> <laughs> I am here tonight because we have such a problem in transportation. We cannot keep good drivers who have been with us for a long time because they just can't afford to work for Clay County anymore. The seasoned drivers like myself who have been here up to 15 years are still making less than poverty level, quite a bit less than poverty level. We do want to thank you for some of the improvements that have happened over the last couple of years. We very much appreciate those air-conditioned buses we're getting. Please keep replacing those old ones as fast as you can. It makes such a difference. So we haven't had a driver drop from heat exhaustion all year, I don't believe. <laughs> That's quite a record because it was happening right and left before. So I'm not here just to complain. I want you all to know that we do appreciate what you have done to improve things. But we have a long way to go, folks. Our people come to work every day. They come to work when they're sick. They can't afford insurance. They can't afford to be off. They come anyway because of the kids. We're about to enter bargaining again. Please, please look at your budget. Somewhere you can find some money that can be shifted around. If the president can do it, you can. <laughs> it's about the same size of problem in comparison to what he has right now, I think. We have professional support staff who are just about done. They just can't go any longer the way they have been going. We have people two or three a week leaving us that have been with us a long time. You can check with our director and get the numbers on these, but it's happening right and left. And the reason mostly is the pay. You just have to find some money, please. Two or three a week. A week. And that's just in transportation. Our other support staff is hurting just as badly on the pay side. I don't know their numbers, but I have talked to them in meetings, and they're all having problems making their bills. This is just wrong. It has to be fixed. Thank you. The next speaker is Stanley Finning.
Good evening. I'd like to thank Jesus Christ and the United States military for providing me the opportunity to speak here today. I'd like to talk to you. First, state your name, please. Uh, well, you called me up here, Stanley Fenning, so I figured we'd all do the math on that. But um, Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I want to talk a little bit. First of all, I'd like to thank, through the chair, I'd like to thank Mr. Davis for talking to me the other day about these agenda workshop meetings and how the agenda is being put together because this agenda to me is 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 unique in that there's so much work being done on consent agenda you know and i know that's splitting hairs maybe for some reason but i think that consent agenda we're spending millions of dollars without much discussion on the board floor about these uh huge numbers and uh and i think that posting the uh, agenda for the workshop with the supplemental materials, just like the board's going to get to look at on that Tuesday morning in the room off camera till later the day uh, when those meetings are published. But uh, if we could, if we could get the backup materials when the workshop agendas are first published, so that we can get the same, same opportunity to study up on what's going to be discussed on those Tuesday mornings um, with, with the opportunity to, to understand what's going on and do some research so we'll, we'll be informed when we get there. Um, you know, I think that... I'm having trouble tonight because I don't feel comfortable here. I've, I've been made to feel very uncomfortable here in the past for coming up and, and speaking my mind and and being truthful about some things. And and I want you to know, Mrs. Studdard, that I spent a long time away from here on purpose so that I could get right with my heart. And, and I prayed a lot for the strength to forgive you for so many things that happened while I'm standing here exercising my freedom of expression. And I, I've spent a lot of time praying for your loving husband to forgive him for some of the things that he's done to me. I'm sorry, and Mrs. Studdard, I feel like this is inappropriate. We, um, we don't bring in family members and we know personal attacks against our chairman or any other board member up I'm here. I'm not personally attacking anybody. I'm saying I, I, I worked Mr. hard Fanning, to forgive you. Mr. Fanning, if you have you, something to say about the school district, the board, or okay. the functioning yeah. of, or the, the operations of the district, fine, but you leave family members out of it. Are family members protected under the Constitution? Because I came here with the ex expectation of being able to speak freely. And, and, and I haven't said anything about overthrow the government. I haven't threatened anybody. I haven't personally attacked anybody. I forgave people, Mrs. Kerkis. I didn't mention family members in a derogatory manner. I forgave people, and I'm, I'm going to come back next month, and I'm going to spend some time to forgive you as well, because you've got some coming as well. Thank you for your time and attention. Okay, thank you. The next speaker is Amber Shepard. Amber Shepard, my address is on file. Um, I've been involved watching the school board stuff that's been going on for a number of years, and it's unfortunate. It seems like things aren't really changing. You know, we had elected some people to office hoping that we would get a little bit more transparency. Um, and, you know, a lot of individuals have reached out to me. As you know, I, I did an interview with the sheriff. I asked for an interview with Mr. Davis. I haven't had that opportunity yet. I hope we can still do that. Um, because I would like to be able to share your side 
unedited, just like I did with Sheriff Daniels. Um, I think it's important for citizens to know all of the facts and to know everything that's going on. And, you know, it's unfortunate for individuals like Mr. Fenning, who just came up here and spoke, from his personal experience. Um, there have been things that have gone on in these meetings. And while we're not allowed to talk about family members anymore, certain family members have overstepped boundaries, and I've witnessed things. And that's not appropriate. People have the right to come and speak to their elected officials. They have the right to be heard. We have protected free speech. And we also have government laws that require people to have um, meetings in sunshine. And citizens want to know what's going on with their tax dollars. When I've talked with citizens about what's going on with the school board and the new police department, their biggest issue is not necessarily that this um, new police department is being formed. It's how everything was handled. Citizens feel like they weren't informed. They weren't given the opportunity to speak about it. And it seems like everything's going really, really fast. I watched in the um, April 2018 county commission meeting where numbers were discussed, but never in the 2019 meeting when you guys made that vote was Daryl Daniels' numbers presented for what he expected to be the cost of the new, um, the new updates for the police department if CCSO were going to continue that. As a matter of fact, Ms. Gilhausen even asked, where, where did these numbers come from and how did we get those numbers? Those, the numbers that were provided weren't all of the information. And I think that it's, um, it's foolish to make decisions based on bits and pieces of information. Um, I hope going forward that you guys will really consider looking into uh, the costs because as I've heard, it's going to be an increase in sales tax, another increase in millage. The citizens don't want that. That's what's being shared in the community. That's what they're concerned about. Um, they don't want to have to pay more money. We kind of feel like we've given you an, a set amount. You guys have to have a balanced budget and operate within that budget. Thank you. Okay, that completes our uh, public comments. Uh, before we go to the adoption of the consent agenda, uh, I do have one card on consent C24, Lonnie Roberts. Good evening. My name is Lonnie Roberts. My name and uh, address is on file. Man, after listening to people uh, talk about the insurance, uh, I don't know where I was going to go with this, but um, <laughs> I'm here to speak. The, uh, man, I hate to say it, but uh, to approve the uh, the insurance for what the committee had approved. Um, the insurance committee looked at all the possibilities to lower the percentages rates for the employees uh, in the district. The Bailey Group and our committee came to an agreement with United Health and the benefits that you're looking or that you've seen in your uh, backup file already. With that calculation of uh, a 45% increase, which it would have been because uh, we are using 107% of the insurance. We have uh, uh, a lot of sick people that's out there. And uh, we came to an agreement with uh, United Health uh, together, along with uh, the Bailey Group, to decrease it down to 19.5%. That was still hard for us to swallow to even have that. Uh, like I said, it's, it's hard to come up here and say to approve something after listening to the folks that was before me. But, uh, of course, those numbers uh, of the actual increase and the pay that's going to uh, be coming out of people's pockets uh, will have to be bargained with. CESPA starts bargaining on Monday, 10 o'clock, pre-employment room. Um, hope some of y'all can be there. And uh, hopefully that we can go ahead and come to some uh, uh, concession to where we can go ahead and put more money uh, towards the uh, P 
people's uh, insurance. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, items pulled from the um, consent agenda to discussion are items C2, C4, and C19. So I'll entertain a motion for to approving the consent agenda with the items delete pulled. So moved. I'll second. Have a motion by Ms. Bola, second by Ms. Caracas. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5 0. Mine didn't come up. Did yours all come up? Yeah. Is Jeremy here? Just tell Karen to do it for you. Mine didn't come up. Mine didn't come up. Just vote for me, please. Mine didn't come up either. Ms. Bolas didn't come up either. Mine did. Who, who is here? I think, whoops. Are you okay? I thought you fell. Yeah, Ms. Bush will vote for us, but uh, our vote. Let me see if, if I, maybe if I refresh it, it'll, no. Now it came up. Okay. Well, it doesn't, it says view, but it won't let me vote. Here. I, I hit refresh while I go. All right. Okay, just a minute. Now it's, now it's up. Uh, Well, it's got, oh, Ms. Bush must have voted for me. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm good, I think. <clears throat> Has everybody voted now? Okay. Uh, in the consent agenda that we have just approved is item C-16, the Proclamation 19-13 to establish April... 2019 as School Library Month in Clay County. So it has been established. Okay, CCEA update. Betsy Rager, what did you do? A glacier in Alaska? Isn't it a good story? My pastor just got his off. He wore it for three months. I only had a couple of weeks, but I'm ready. Bless your to heart. Thanks. Oh. Stay off of glaciers in Alaska. <laughs> Do okay. my best. Okay. Um, Rinley asked me to bring y'all some stuff, and I know she's probably watching, so behave. <laughs> <laughs> she probably wouldn't, but you need to. Um, first off, we're supportive of raising beginning teacher salaries to help recruit the very best teachers to our schools. But please remember our veteran teachers. We can't have new hires leapfrogging our veteran teachers. Any increase that you bring to bargaining for the placement schedule needs to also include our folks that are already here and working. The second thing she wanted me to talk about was we've gotten a lot of phone calls in the office about the math adoption or non-adoption for elementary school. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a lot of confusion about with the governor saying no more common core, what are we going to order, what can't we order, and um, <clears throat> the principals are giving conflicting information about what they're going to get. So they want to know what's going on with their consumables. And just please make sure that information gets out to the principal so the teachers can know what they're going to be doing. And finally, we're concerned about Senate Bill 7030 in Tallahassee right now. Um, we absolutely oppose any effort to arm teachers. Arming our teachers will put our students and our teachers in harm's way. Many of our teachers have already told us that they don't want to work in a school where their colleagues are packing. And I can tell you for certain that I don't want Grayson in that school because he can be a little difficult. So what happens when the good guys with the guns arrive on the scene? 
How are they supposed to know whether our teacher is a guardian or a shooter? And what happens if a student gets a hold of the gun? Just this week in another county in Florida, an elementary school student made a lunge for a guardian's gun. What happens if he got it? What happens if there's gunfire outside the classroom? Does the armed teacher run out to face the danger and leave her kids alone, her class alone? What if there's an accident? What if the teacher doesn't respond? We know that the trained deputy in Parkland didn't. Will our teachers be disciplined if they have a weapon and they don't use it? And how are you going to keep our teachers safe? Who will know which teachers are armed? I promise you, if you've ever worked in a middle school or a high school, the kids will know. Our teachers want to teach. We should be helping our students reach their potential. We shouldn't be reaching for a gun. Oh, that's sad. Look at that. Okay, next, the uh, CESPA update, Teresa Dixon. I'm wearing my tall shoes today. <laughs> <laughs> um, Teresa Dixon, I'm president of CESPA, and I'm glad to be here to speak tonight. I have a number of things that I just wanted to bring up. First of all, I want to thank my CESPA members who apparently have moved <laughs> for the things that they, they had to say. I think they were right on with, with every comment that was made. Um, and I want to reiterate some of that just by saying that, yes, bargaining comes up very soon, Monday, April 8th, 10 a.m. We start bargaining. We're at the table. So we're very excited to get started. We have a lot of things um, prepared already, and we're sure that the district's team is preparing as well. Um, but we do want to make sure that you do remember us as your uh, approving support allocations or supplemental allocations and administrative allocations. And I see a lot of changes and a lot of big salaries coming up real soon. And it gets a little scary, you know, when you're the support employee and you're wondering what's going to be left, what's going to be left. So we're watching this very closely and um, we just hope that you will remember us. And going into the insurance issue that really, really is a devastating is issue for the support employees. And while um, Lonnie spoke about approving the, the insurance as it was presented, you know, we really have very little um, ability to do much more negotiations where that's concerned. The insurance company kind of comes to us and says, well, this is what our rates are and gives us a break somewhat, what we do have power over is what does the school board do for the employee now. So, and that, that's going to come into our negotiations, and I really hope that you're thinking about that, because these increases, you know, as I was listening to Ms. Clymer speak about the increase, increases, $888 a month for an, an employee and their spouse, that's just wild. I can't even imagine once you start adding children in there, how, how much that goes, goes up. Mm -hmm. And I know that in the past, and I, I haven't spoken to any lately, but I know in the past that we have had employees that are literally working full time and writing the district a check to pay for their insurance. And that, that, that just shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that the, my, my hope is that the school board will buy into this. That's what I'd like to see happen. Whenever we got to the point where we moved from a, a percentage to a dollar amount, and for I can't even think how many years now it's been like that, that the school board has a dollar amount that they will contribute. It doesn't matter if the insurance rates go up to a million dollars. They're still only going to pay that dollar amount. And as the insurance rates have increased, the employee portion has continued to increase, and that's strangling our people. And we would feel better about it if the school board would look at going back to a percentage, because then we feel like you've got buy-in with us. You've got skin in the game with us. It's just as important to you to negotiate good rates as it is to us. And so we'd really like to see some changes there. 
Um, another thing I'd like to speak about, and this goes right along with bargaining and, and costs, is under your legislative priorities, you did mention beginning teacher salaries, and while that is important, please don't forget our support employees. You know, a lot of times we're on the back burner, but along with, with legislative priorities for teachers, we need legislative priorities for our support employees also, because we are the foundation that helps keep things running so those teachers can teach. Um, other things within the legislative priorities, I was really glad to see a lot of things. Of course, choice is the big buzzword, and, and bringing more and more and more choices to our public schools is a great thing, because that, that seems to be the buzzword everybody wants to hear. Here in Clay County, we have all kinds of choices in our Clay County public schools, all kinds of choices, great choices. Um, the full-day VPK that, that's in the legislative uh, uh, legislative priorities, I think is great. I talk to people all the time that want their children to go to the VPK program in the public school system, but they can't because it's a half-day program. And they, they need that that extra day that or that extra time because they're working or doing other things. So encouraging the legislation to go to a, a full day VPK would be very beneficial to a lot of our people, especially our struggling or lower income people. Um, the safe school money uh, to cover the mandates, that would be really nice if the legislation would, would start actually giving you the money to cover the things that they mandate that you have to do. So I'm glad to see that on the priority list. Um, and, and even, you know, over the years, you know, we've seen a reduction constant year after year after year in our education budget. So bringing that millage back from 1.5 to a 2, you know, that should be a priority. They keep taking away and chipping away and chipping away. It's time to start giving back to public education. Another thing that, that hits me kind of personally is, is the eliminating the high school testing. Now, of course, I am a high school testing coordinator, so I'm talking about my job here. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> I'm, I'll talk about this on, on a personal level. You know, I'm, I'm talking about let's eliminate my job. <laughs> but truly, truly, um, when we get into testing season, which we've just started, the, the amount of time that's put into testing for our students is just, you can't even contemplate the hours. Um, and then when I look at things, you know, I, 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 I try to stay connected to what people are talking about. And I hear people just spreading all kinds of misinformation regarding testing. And primarily, they're talking about the FSA and the FSA scores. And it infuriates me because often I'll hear people talk about how, oh, well, only 50-some percent of our, our high school graduates are, are at a level three on FSA. Well, what they fail to bring into that is... High school students take the FSA at 10th grade. So they've still got two more years. But once they pass that test, whether it's a level three, level four, level five, they're not going to take it again. People don't think about that. So it's really not a good gauge of where our students really are. What is a good gauge is exactly what you have in your legislative priority regarding the ACT and the SAT. These are national tests, nationally recognized tests that, that would be a better gear or a better gauge of where our students are. So I was really happy to see that in there, even though I don't want to lose my job. <laughs> So uh, another thing that that um, I wanted to talk about, I, I've been, you know, really following this uh, school district police department, and I'm really happy to see this new uniform. It's beautiful. It's awesome. It looks great. He looks like a real policeman, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's a real policeman there. He doesn't resemble Barney Fife, not, not one at iota. all. Not at all. Doesn't look like the mall cop. <laughs> no. Doesn't look like Barney Fife. He looks like a real genuine police officer. I he is. You look great, by the way. Um, so I just I just wanted to talk a little bit about about blushes. all of this. He, you may he, he's blushing now, Miss. I, I think he should. I think he should take a walk and model and. <laughs> 
Oh. Anyway, um, I just I want to thank um, <laughs> Superintendent Davis and Chief Wagner for getting out in the communities and getting some information out. I think that's been important. I think it's been key. And I think a lot of the misinformation that's been going on has been due to people not feeling like they have the information that they needed. Now, with that being said, I think many of their questions have been answered. I think they've obviously seen that we have real or and we will continue to have real police officers, experienced police officers that are that are certified to do their job, um, that we have the ability to make this happen. The speed in which all the pieces are falling together has just been amazing to watch. Um, and I'm fully supportive of the process. I also am perplexed why the continued opposition why the continued op opposition when I, right now we have four to five regarding uh, approval of, of everything having to do with the Clay County School District. It's been conclusively proven that and clearly that that we're going to be able to do this. I think I heard Chief Wagner say we've had 61 applicants already for oh, try 90. Seven. 90 97, 97 quality applicants for SROs. And we have how many guardian so, applicants? 30. Thirty guardian so, applicants. So, so we're we're well on our way to being able to do this by September. I am not worried one bit. I feel like we're going to be able to make good choices and have good, experienced police officers in our schools. And the nice thing about it is we're going to have police officers that are dedicated wholly and solely to our students and our schools. They're not going to be pulled out for community events or community issues that happen. They're going to be dedicated to providing that protection and that service and safety for our students and our faculty. And I think that's important. Um, so, you know, I, I'm just perplexed. I, I know, Ms. Gilhausen, that, that you haven't been in favor of this, but I, I recall it at the February meeting that you wanted to go with option E, and then you moved to option D, which would have given everything to the, the sheriff's department, that part of it, bought them vehicles, bought them equipment, and so on, and then within a year to move right on to option C, which is full control with the Clay County School District. To me, that process was so financially wrong because then you're just buying equipment and spending money unnecessarily twice. So I, I would really like for you to try to get on board with this. I think we're moving in the right direction. I think we've seen that. Um, I think that, that we understand, though Sheriff Daniels did come back with a change, he really didn't change his cost factor. He just changed who was going to be paying for it. Um, but it still doesn't beat the fact that with our Clay County School District's police department, this is going to be ours. It's going to be our vehicles, our people, our equipment. It's going to be something that we're going to have. We're not purchasing it for somebody else. So um, I guess that's it. Oh, oh, I did want to talk also about hardening of schools because I've heard a lot about that. And I don't think if, if people aren't working in the schools, they really don't know what's going on. But I'm constantly seeing those workers at my school installing those doors that prevent people from just walking in and out. People don't, don't see what's happening, but there are things happening all the time. The hardening is going on, but it's not something that's going to be advertised and shown to everybody. Oh, look, this is how you can't get into the school. Um, you know, that's like putting the fox in the hen house. It wouldn't be very responsible. So um, I, I hope that people will, will understand that, that the Clay County School District Sheriff, our police department, I'm not quite sure what the, the phrase is going to be or is, um, is going to do a great job for our schools. And I thank you for continuing to support that. Thank you. Ms. Dixon, you always speak so eloquently. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Okay. Now, for the most eloquent of all, the superintendent's update and presentations. You're, it's all yours. <laughs> yes, ma'am. To the chair, thank you. First and foremost, um, Thank you, Ms. Dixon, also Ms. Rager, for what you do every single day right. to support our employees. We appreciate it. And also Mrs. Paiva, who's not here. 
Uh, we thank you that we have a, a beautiful relationship. We're trying to figure out how we continue to create the best working conditions for our employees every single day. As it relates to, um, to our curriculum, I answered that question before I go into my update. Curriculum's the same, hadn't changed from mathematical. So if, if teachers are watching out there from, from K-6, it is the same. We are not going to change. As it relates to the standards being changed, I can tell you there will be a lot of conversation the next year and a half. And I, I can openly tell you that, um, that you know, it'll be very difficult to overhaul and change standards at a significant um, uh, you know, pace. So you know, I, I would say that there may be some adjustments. However, we will push the adoption process later to abide by the Department of Education. So all the resources that K-6 has now, we will continue to duplicate. We do see some expansion of several materials that we will continue to provide to our teachers to help them be successful. There is some conversations openly about what we do for junior high schools uh, in, in potentially high schools curriculum because, you know, five, when it was adopted, board approved, uh, you know, five years ago, there were some holes in the curriculum. So, you know, teachers are scrounging, trying to find the best resources in that area. So through Mr. Connor and, and, and staff, we are trying to um, figure out what the best you know, step is to to fill these holes instruction and to fill the instructional gaps, and we will work collectively with teachers in order to do so. So, um, please know we're working on that. As relates to uh, bus drivers, thank you first and foremost for what you do every single day. You know, I always talk about you know we can't do anything unless we get students to school because attendance is the most uh, you know uh, important one of the most important aspects to what we do, and we know uh, you know get you know bus drivers do a uh, you know a major task for us. I know last year the board worked rigorously you know really hard to to increase the rate to be more competitive with surrounding counties. So I do think we're right behind St. John's. But I do understand and appreciate and know that we have work to do and that we have to continue to, to pay attention, and we will. And it all comes down to how the uh, – and that's for every support staff and, and educator as well. It just comes down to where we are financially and what we can do. We have all the aspirations to become the number one pay in surrounding counties relates to drivers and support staff as well. And we'll work rigorously, you know, every single day to, to try to make that happen. As it relates to insurance, we know that uh, the, it could have been 45% increase to insurance, a 38 to 45%. And uh, that would, uh, that is, uh, it's unfair. And, uh, you know, so going down to the 19, why it's not attractive, it is so much better than having the 40, 45% increase. Um, and as it relates to, to what we can do this year, we will, we will go into um, to this session with a mindset of understand that we will continue to, to try to support and better assist. And I know last, in the last two years, I believe, or it could be three years, the board has worked really hard to, to put money on employees related to insurance, and the mentality is still there. So I'm, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to speak on the board's behalf, but we'll, uh, you know, mentality is still there to, to assist. Just don't. Just I'm, don't not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying anything else. I'm don't go too far. I'm out of it. Uh, so, so, you know, my presentation this month, they want to talk about update on listen and learn and community listen and learns as it relates to, to safety and uh, you talk about uh, update of testing windows. Ms. Dixon said we're in that uh, we're in that process. And then the impact of controlled open enrollment along with identifying our champions of change for uh, the month of April. Listen and learns, they, they've been going great. And the overall objective is for, for me and uh, Chief Wagner and uh, Dr. Kemp and uh, Mr. McCauley to go and to really uh, to talk to the community about what's going on related to the, the, the district's decision to stand up our own police department. And in this, we talk about how 70, Senate Bill 7026 has allowed us to, has forced us and moved us to have greater concentration on health, on safety. We in the in these times we've talking about uh, what we're doing to harden schools, the structure, the 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 continued laser light focus to continue to protect our most precious assets, our students, and what we're doing in our schools. And then we introduce the chief of police uh, who and talk about his extensive background and how you know Sheriff Daniels' fingerprints is all over this hire because he led the Sheriff Daniels selected him to lead the work for the last seven or eight years. Uh, with Lee, you know, the last couple of years as he led the SRO program for the last seven or eight within Clay County. He's done a fabulous job and allowed the, the new chief to talk about his timeline, vision, expectation, the implementation plan to stand up this uh, department in an efficient manner that is well organized. And then lastly, we have opportunities for question and answers that we can allow the community to, to ask any questions they may have. I will tell you openly that we've, we've tried to do a good job between me and um, Chief Wagner to be in every media outlet that's a recognized media outlet to give them the the time so they can spread our message can grow legs and give accurate information that's related to this work and at the same time get to the community rotary 
meetings, wherever community associations, so that we can continue to address the decision that has been made and how we will uh, implement this plan to further to be uh, to further assist our students and have a resource officer at every single one of our campuses. Um, as it relates to listen learn community, we have some more. We have four remaining. In this listen and learn that we have at our schools, this is the, the schedule and this is the location. They will all start at six o'clock and have a hard stop, but you know, around 7.15, 7.30, depending on what types of questions that, that we, we are, are asked. After these uh, meetings, we, we, I myself and Chief Wagner have been making ourselves available along with staff to answer any questions that may not have been answered or we may have uh, answered them in a different direction to give, uh, you know, that comfort to our community that it's not only about, you know, it's easy to to go and put someone to to drive the work to enforce the law, but making certain that someone's there to be visible, someone's there to be preventative, someone's there to be engaged in the community, and someone's there to be, st you know, stable 100% of the time on our campuses to create beautiful relationships or in, in un better understand early warning indicators and understand to work with mental health, uh, you know, individuals to help students who display academic attendance or behavior issues so we can be on the front side so that we can redirect those behaviors at our school. So the Listen and Learn has been going great. We thank for all the community members who've, who, who've attended and asked great questions. And we, we do believe that, uh, you know, greater information is uh, solid information is getting out to the community where they have a better understanding. And we appreciate those for being willing to listen and learn and push us to make us become better. <coughs> um, as you know, to go into the assessment window, we will, from now, from this point on to the end of the year, we will be in this, this window. We've openly said as a uh, school district that we, uh, you know, there is too many assessments that are out there and that we try to comb down and, and cut those assessments as often as we can, but the state requires us to do so. So this week we had some, uh, some assessments from the writing perspective and ELA. And as you see, we just want the, the parents to be aware that this schedule will run from, you know, now to the end of May related to English, language, arts, math, social, stu social studies, and science, along with some end of course of examinations. And please know that uh, the biggest thing we ask you as, um, as caregivers and as parents is just ask your, your children to treat this like every other day, but understand what best effort is and to give best effort on this assessment. We know that these assessments do not define our learners, but it's just a, you know, a gauge that the state has to use to hold us accountable and to have measures in place to make certain that we are doing everything we can to improve teaching and learning. As relates to, to our school district, know that we, are, our, our teachers and our school-based administrators are looking to, at every student before they assess and, and, and speaking to them. And if they're not psychologically ready to take that assessment, we are not allowing them to sit and we will, we will put them at a different session or makeup session to make sure that a child is ready and prepared to assess before they, before they sit down and take that, um, that opportunity. Um, this again is social studies and science. This will be in, the, in, in May, but ELA and math are on the early side of it. And then we'll have some in the course examinations that will be in biology, civics, and U.S. history as well. So all this to say is parents, you know, you know, treat your, you know, make sure that our children get good rest. They have uh, uh, great meals and nutrition and give them a great pep talk as our teachers and school leaders will be doing and support staff will be doing the same. Um, as it relates to controlled open enrollment, as you know, the controlled open enrollment window was from the February the 20th, you know, started in February and transitioned through the area of March. I'm proud to say that we have 516 individuals that have taken advantage of controlled open enrollment. And, you, and if you look at over, overall for the scale, you see the, the, the greatest impact. We've had 113 ch uh, kindergarten students who are going to the kindergarten taking advantage of the controlled open enrollment. And this controlled open enrollment is where we have schools that have uh, under 85% threshold and utilization as outlined by our fish. And then we have more kids that are moving from uh, seventh grade not in, and also moving to ninth grade that uh, aspire to, to come to our school district. And overall, we have around 294 students. If you calculate the categories for students who are out of county, homeschool, private school, charter school, more kids are coming back, virtual and other, other programs because they openly and honestly, the school district, uh, and, I, and you look at this number, this is because we have great teaching and learning taking place. So over the last two years, we continue to, to accelerate in being in a top 10 school district. And I think this has significant amount of, of, of impact of what we're doing. As relates to the, if you look at the trend to where we are for a controlled open enrollment in a three-year, you know, glance, we're, we're increased over 110 
uh, students from last year's to this year's. And I do believe because it's the, the quality of educational experience that we offer, but at the same time, the way that we market this program. Hats off to uh, Terry Dennis. She led this work this year. And, um, you know, she continued to, to push and along with uh, other colleagues and, and staff members. And I think that has significant impact of, of what, where we are and what we're actually offering. And you see that this year we have 244 students that are newcomers to Clay County District Schools. And that is 47% of the applicants. And we will welcome them. And that's a great number for, for, for an increase as well. Um, as relates to what schools are, are out there, we see that in elementary schools, we have over 206 students that are part of this uh, controlled open enrollment. And whereas we have a waiting list at Argyle Elementary School and a waiting list for Fleming Island Elementary School, but we, will, we see the number of seats are being filled and we have 132 um, junior high school students that are taking the leap at Lakeside Junior High School and Orange Park Junior High School. And then we have a, a big increase of 141 students in the area of high school, with Ridgeview High School taking a, an increase of 54 students this year, along with a number of students seeking to go to Orange Park. So overall, we see that uh, this is positive, and uh, we see great things uh, happening related to controlled open enrollment and being able to service more kids within our school district. Um, over and, and lastly, I'll go down for my champion of change, and uh, then I'll turn it back over to our chair. So every, through the chair, every month we identify a champion of change or champions of change that we, uh, you know, have an opportunity to, to celebrate educators, support staff, administrators, community members who really do significant work within, within our organization. And as you know, uh, you know, April is the National Autism Awareness Month, and this is a month where, you know, we understand that autism impacts one every 59 uh, children in, in America. And we know that this month's champion of change are individuals who go over and beyond the call of duty to support you know, the, the students who are on and in the autism spectrum disorder. You know, the, you know this, we had an individual that um, was a top five can't, you know, for the teacher of the year finalist within our school district. And I'll, I'll say her name now. Her name is Miss Jessica Moreland. And uh, she is a definitely a, a first round draft pick within the school district. You know, Ms. Moreland promotes social inclusion for all and utilizes an on call, you know, on site coffee shop called the, uh, the More Mocha Cafe. And uh, you see that it, it, it helps our students with daily skills to, to, to interact every single day with numerous opportunities for them to communicate with their peers and interact with their peers. You know, to my understanding, they've raised over $15,000 in this coffee shop. $20,000, Ms. Moreland said, in this coffee shop, which is amazing. But it gives our kids so much opportunity to have confidence, to be able to interact, and to be able to have teach them life, you know, life skills. But more importantly, this money has been not only to help this program, to help our children, but Ms. Moreland has helped other organizations throughout this nation through Canines uh, for Warriors, uh, you know, Safe Animal Shelters, North Florida School of Special Education, Jacksonville Center for Autism. The list continues to go on. You know, so I want to take a moment not only to recognize her for, for what she does, but also support staff. She has honored Mrs. Peggy um, Morbach. Did I say it right? I say Morbach. And I, and I got a chance to go to this classroom yesterday, actually. And, it, and it's amazing for what they do every single day, time and every single day for our children. You know, she, her and Mr. Uh, Tony, uh, you know, uh, Voiro, who's not here. He's not, he's another support staff. He's not here because he's a, a coach of a baseball team for Ridgeview. He would love to be here, you know, but he loves to help kids in, in that answer. But they do so much great work as their assistants. And it's my pleasure to, um, to recognize them as our champions of change. If y'all would please come up because uh, we have a presentation as well. And they are our champions in change for, for April. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Let's see if I got the right ones. All right. Because, um, you know, through the through the hard work that uh, that y'all can stay right there for a minute because we got more, you know, in recognition for your, for your hard work every single day, a field trip experience, um, you know, uh, for your class this year will be going to the Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens on the date of your choice. 
So you're getting, all your kids are going to get to go to the zoo. They're going to get to go, well, we'll take care of Clay County District Schools. We'll take care of your transportation. Uh, we'll take care of admission tickets for all of your students as well. And then your lunch will be sponsored by the Clay County Educational uh, Association for your students and your chaperones. Ms. Moreland, Ms. Morag, and, and Mr. Boyko is not here. I want to thank you for your dedication, your efforts, and your love that you provided your stu our students every single day. You are definitely game changers in our family and our community. Recognize this. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Biley and, and Mrs. Uh, Ellinger had something a lot to do with this with uh, Ms. Buchanan as well. So we thank them for their efforts and um, we look forward for a great time for Zoo. I know you have a number of people who'd go for chaperones if you need them but uh, we want to thank you and give this to you as well all right miss Moreland uh -oh. come back I want to say something. Ms. Moreland, when the uh, selection committee for teacher of the year, you could stand here because I'm only embarrass you. When the selection committee for the Clay County teacher of the year uh, went to the different five different classrooms for the five finalists, I, I want you to know when we left your classroom, you moved us. I mean, you really moved all of us to the point that we wanted to do something. And this, thank you, Jessica. I mean, y'all did a fantastic job, but we wanted to do something because, you know, you've got to be a special angel to do what you're doing on a daily basis. Um, we were overwhelmed and I just want to say thank you publicly for what you do for our kids every day and enjoy the zoo enjoy, enjoy it and your staff thank you so very much <laughs> yes yeah, right that's right coffee for sale <laughs> and 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 lastly I forgot to say this to the chair I'm sorry I'll turn it back over to you as superintendent I I'm, I, I will openly tell you I have no aspirations to to arm teachers you know, we, they're there to teach and educate. They have too much on their plate right now. And um, I think we can do that through other measures. So I just want to make that acknowledged. Okay. Um, and, and also coming on board, uh, a couple things. A, um, you know, Mr. Bruce Harbin is uh, retiring this week. He has gave significant time and efforts and energy to Clay County District Schools. He has been a true champion in his efforts as he led the work of safety and security with it, with it, within, our, within our school district. Uh, with that said, we have worked for succession management, and uh, I'd like to, uh, to announce that uh, Mr. John Ward will be taking on those roles and responsibilities. Raise your hand, John. Well, welcome on board. He, uh, Mr. Ward is leads, uh, he, he currently leads and sits in the position as a director of safety and I think management within Clay County's entire school, uh, uh, Clay County uh, con entire community. So it's a, this is a major hire for us and coming on board to be able to lead those efforts. So thank you and welcome, sir. And look forward to our continued partnership and thank you, Mr. Harbin. And um, uh, yeah, I know he's not here tonight, but uh, thank you for all the work that you, that you have done as well. I, I just felt that we needed to say something. Yep. He's sitting back there, <laughs> and we are so, so happy to have you. And uh, on behalf of the board, too, if Mr. Harvin is watching, thank you, Bruce Harvin, for your years of service to the Clay County School District. You will be missed. And um, we look forward to working you, with you, Mr. John Ward. Okay. <laughs> and, and work. Work, work, work. We're hardening things, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got to harden everything. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. We are going to take a five minute recess. Well, it's uh, 10 till. We'll resume uh, on the hour. Okay.
if everyone will be seated, we'll resume our meeting. If you'll please be seated, we'll resume our meeting. If you'll resume your seats, we'll resume our meeting. If it's cold in here, yeah. It's, it's getting cold in here, Dr. Kent. We're trying to save money. Okay, we will resume our school board meeting. Uh, discussion items, the first item, uh, C2. This was pulled by Mrs. Gilhausen. This is the 2019 legislative priorities. Ms. Gilhausen? We need a motion and a second oh, first before discussion. Does we have a motion and a second before we have discussion? I'll move approval. I'll second. Have a motion by Ms. Caracas, a second by Ms. Bola. All right, Ms. Gilhausen, this was your item. Thank you. Um, so since these are the board's um, legislative priorities, I felt like we should have some discussion about them. Um, I think that um, the superintendent did a fantastic job in putting these together. I really um, agree with what Ms. Dixon was saying about how um, we're being competitive with the choices that we op offer in um, public education. I think that's important, and um, hopefully our state legislators will agree with us on that. Um, the only issue that I had is where we're um, asking the state to increase the millage rate from 1.5 to 2.0. And I had phone calls from um, taxpayers who were concerned because of the vote that we had last year to raise the millage, and now we're asking the state to make it a priority to raise the millage again. Um, so I'm in agreement with this document with the exception of that one item, and I just wanted to know if that's something that you all would consider. Any comments for the board? Anybody want to consider changing that? No. I my only concern with changing that is that it, how can um how can I put all my thoughts together? The legislature has, at least I know for the last three years, basically said the amount that they are allowing for the millage. This is is going to be reduced because the property taxes are going up. So therefore, their perspective was, we don't want to overtax any of our citizens or increase the taxes of our citizens. I understand that side of it. The, the frustration and the concern that I would have is that in looking at our overall budget, and Dr. Lugutko, if I don't say this right, please stop me, <laughs> but the overall budget for the past few years has actually, the amount that's been allocated to the school districts has actually gone down and, the, and we're not able to, I mean, we've literally had to look and say, okay, they're not allowing us what they allowed us in the previous year. Mm -hmm. And, and that, I'm, I guess I'm the concern here is that if we were to take that out, if we were not, if we were going to say the millage doesn't matter, and, Ed, and I know it matters, but you understand where I'm coming from, where we're going to say, well, we don't want it to go back to 2.0. We just want to see what you can do that what's best. The legislature is going to continue to roll that down. They're going to continue to take it away from us. And that, does that make sense? Does that make no, I I understand how it works. The um, and that and that's something that took me forever to understand. Mm -hmm. And so once I was able to wrap my brain around it, I thought, wait a minute, you're you're saying you're giving us money from the state, and there were a lot of questions as to where is mon where does the money come from? That was a question, in fact, recently in one of the listen and learns. Where does the money come from for school boards? Or and it's like, well, from the state. And when the state says, yeah, but we're going to cut it back a little bit because we don't want anyone to think that we're giving you too much. And it's like, whoa. And then we look at the amount of money that we need for a new HVAC unit or something for one of our high schools. And it's like, yeah, we do need that money. It's not, 
it, we're not spending it frivolously. So I guess that's why I would want it to stay. Okay, any other discussion? I don't have on that item, but I have. I, I didn't pull it because she'd already pulled it, and I have do have something that I wanted to add. On the legislative? Part? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I think I brought it up. to speak. Yes, I brought it up at the agenda review about putting uh, in parentheses what schools would be impacted. Like, for example, the, I know we've talked about Copper Gate being the one for the performing arts, so put that in parentheses so that would be on one document. I think I asked that, so if that can be done, that's all. You know, um, that was something that Mr. Davis had sent to us in September when we got these mm -hmm. originally. Right. It was attached. You probably hadn't gotten it and received it. Yeah. Um, he did a whole big presentation on each school and what they were getting, yeah. um, but not on here, but you're right about I that. I just want it on the, on the sheet if you just I, say that whatever schools will be impacted by it. I guess my only thought with all of this is, is really, you know, they're three quarters of the way through the legislative session. Any changes that we make right now, it's not going to have any effect on anything. Um, you know, like I said at the agenda review, we need to address this in the fall. This needed to be, you know, all set in place. And next year we'll be starting the legislative session. We'll start earlier. It'll start in January. So, um, you know, any changes that we make, you know, when does session end? May 1st? Yes, ma'am. I think so. so. It's like three it's weeks. Yeah. left. It's already it's six weeks shadow, into it. Yeah. So, you know, I understand Ms. Gilhausen's concern, although um, I s was sat here watching school board meetings for years when it was referred to as the two mil, the two mil, the two mil. And then it was cut to the 1.75. And then the oh, voters oh. voted for a quarter mil increase that the state mm -hmm. met. And it brought in $4.2 million um, between the state matching grants. And so, um, I do every year question the rollback. It makes no sense to me if property values have increased and more revenue could be coming in that they roll us back so that we're receiving the same amount, same amount we received the year before. Mm -hmm. And 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 my other gripe with that, as I say every year, is you know we have no control over that. We just are basically we're voting what the state's telling us to do, which really we shouldn't even be voting on. The state's setting it; it should just be set. But um, but I, I would personally love to see it go back to the, the two mil money like it always was. So I am certainly not in favor of pulling that out. Um, I would have no issue with, you know, adding the schools um, on, as to which are getting what. That's fine. But again, like I said, session's over in three weeks. Yes, ma'am. And uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Mr. Davis, you have the floor. So through the chair, and, and, and I agree. I think the timeline will definitely uh, be pushed up when when it's like um, I can bring it to a workshop and we'll put it in on the agenda for us to to identify and go deeper in this work but once again this was uh, submitted in September this is the first time I've heard of any adjustments want to be made but um, we'll we'll continue to uh, to make sure our timelines in line with the session so we can do continue to do better work mm -hmm. yeah what month was it Ms. Bush at the agenda review that we decided we were going to start with this September? No, we had talked about yeah. December. And December. If, if I may make a recommendation, if you're going, uh, Mr. Davis, if you're going to be bringing the legislative priorities to us early, in the fall again, yes, ma'am. Let's say in September. That's when they should. When come. he brings yes, them to us, could we just at this point in time say at the next agenda workshop, mm -hmm. add a workshop, right? Um, at the end of the very sure. next one, let's talk about October. Let's not wait until close right. to session and have a because to really if we have it, yeah. we then have the opportunity to talk to our legislators and to our state, our state senator, and be able to right. say, "Yes, we are all in agreement, right. and this is where we're coming right. from." Yeah. Well, for That's next year, idea. and Mrs. Studd, you may remember this: when they start session in January, mm -hmm. aren't the committees actually starting committee meetings September, October, November? So we may have to look at it in August. Or workshop we'll just, uh, September. We'll, we'll, we'll get the uh, timeline. Right. Day on. Yes, ma'am. I don't know when they start the committee meeting. When they, do they, they start early? I, I'm um, not sure. We'll, we can find yeah. out yeah. and get it yeah. adjusted accordingly yeah. back into it. Right. So, so I am gathering from the discussion mm -hmm. that we'll go ahead and take a vote now. Well, did we want? There doesn't seem to be any. Miss Bullock's item of oh, just adding, have them just add the schools. How do you feel about adding the, at this late date this <laughs> year? I mean, or do you think who's going to see it? We've already been over there. Well, I think given, the document is more or less 
for us, right. for our for our folks to see what's important yeah. to us. And that, well, that could kind add, of... Could you add the locations on this to, and maybe have it on our well, website? Even, even yeah. If you put tentatively. Yeah. I mean, because you don't know for yeah, a fact. That's right. Through yeah, the chair, so I agree. That, I mean, we can we can put yeah. uh, projected schools, but yeah, it, may, it, it may jump around and, you know, the need may not be there. It may be different. Right. But we can go back and, and just we can identify schools that potentially this would impact within our school district, okay. without a doubt. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Mr. Bickner, do we need to amend that motion or is it okay to just approve it as is with the tentative changes? I would amend the motion. I think what you, because what you're doing, you, you, you're sending it back to him to approved mm -hmm. for whatever he may put in there. So I think you need to amend the motion to put in there what you could put in there. All right. So okay, so this, you I, made the motion. Even if it's loose language. I'll, I move that we amend this motion to um, adopt the 2019 legislative priorities with the changes that the superintendent's going to make. Does it have to be specific? Do I have to be specific on that? Or is... With the changes he's going to make in what area? Uh, changes he's going to make to address which schools Projected would be Projected locations Pro no. of okay. the Projected. items. All right. And then I was the second, and, and then I you second. Agree, okay. I'm in agreement of the okay. amended okay, so amendment. But, so okay, so we have to vote on the amended one first, and then vote on the motion. Okay. Okay. So we're going to vote on the amended motion. <laughs> Which you have a motion by me, a second by Ms. Rolla right. to right. amend. Okay. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. No. All right. Motion uh, passes uh, four to one with Ms. Gilhausen dissenting. Okay. That was the amended motion. Now we vote on the original motion as okay. amended. Okay. And I've, we still have the motion by Mrs. Uh, Karakas, second by Ms. Bolo on this. <laughs> All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. <laughs> oh. I'm st That's okay. My brain goes somewhere else. Uh, motion carries four to one with Ms. Gilhouse and dissenting. I was, I wasn't even thinking about that. Okay. Okay. All right. Next is um, <clears throat> Human Resources Special Action A. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Have a motion by Ms. Gilhausen, a second by Ms. Bola. I have discussion. You have discussion? I have discussion, mm -hmm. and Do I won't name names. Careful. I feel that this incident, this warrants termination. I don't agree with the superintendent's recommendation of the discipline at all. I feel like um, this is way out of line. This is someone who does not need to be around children. I will not support this. Any confident, any, uh, well, if anyone else want to make any comments, then I'm going to close it. Let me go back. Okay. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. I'm sorry, I forgot to vote. Aye. <laughs> You're an aye? I'm sorry, I'm an aye. Hallelujah. I'm an aye. <laughs> okay. Motion passed carries four to one with Mrs. Caracas dissenting. Okay. Ms. Caracas, one more nay vote and we're tied. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are just trying to stand out here, girls. Let's see. Next, we have Human Resources Special oh, Action B. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Butter, did you? What? You forgot oh, to vote. Did I? Oh, I guess I better vote. I was so busy trying to. I got it so excited that Miss Gill hasn't voted yay. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Um, I'm not such a Debbie Downer. All the time. <laughs> okay, come on in, vote. It won't. She did it for you. She did it for me. Okay. Okay, it's the small things that get me all excited. Let's see. Human Resources Special Action B. Move to approve. Second. Have a motion by Miss Sec uh, Miss Miss Second Miss Miss Bola. A second by Miss Gilhausen. All those in favor indicate by saying. Wait, saying wait. I discussion. 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 Hold on. Here we go. Um, and and I will support this. Um, however, I would like the contract when it's re ready to be renewed for this facility to come to the board. I'd like to know when it's due to be renewed. Um, I remember when we handled this a year and a half ago, I was opposed to it then. Wait, it's wait. now ended up costing us a substantial amount of money what? on something that they're not doing right. So um, I don't want to go into the details right. of this one, yeah. but um, you do remember it came to us in January of 2018. Yeah. Uh, there were questions about specific things and how things were handled. And um, I think it's really important that we review the contract um, I actually would like to see it, so if you could just send it. I don't know if all the board wants it or not, but I certainly would. Thank you. I just wanted to be heard. I want to go on record that this is costing a substantial amount of money, and it should never have gotten to this point. I'll amen to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know it was, I think, the majority, but I think it was a 3-2 vote at the time. Anyway. Okay. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Five zero? I was an aye. Yeah. Five zero? Five zero. Hey, we can do it. Okay, mm -hmm. good. <laughs> Motion passes five zero. Okay, next is proposed supplement allocations for 2019-2020. Um, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval. Have a motion by Ms. Caracas. Second. Second by Ms. Bola. Uh, is there any discussion? Ms. Bullock, this was your item? Yes, it was. I, I pulled this because, of course, as you know, that I always try to look for equity, especially where I realize sometimes it's hard to provide that at all the schools, but um, I, I think it's very important. And so I, um, um, two things I would like to have happen. First of all, and I looked at Keystone High School because their configuration is seven through 12. So it's a little different um, setup than a lot of the schools. I'd like to see those um, <laughs> academic and athletic supplements come to us, come to me or to come to all of us for junior high and high school, <laughs> Keystone Heights junior, what they're getting. Cause I'm going back and forth trying to see what it was. And I called the principal and I also talked to the academic uh, person in charge and the athletic um, department uh, head. And um, one of the things they would like to see added, they added wrestling, I guess, um, this year. Yes, and so it's the program has grown it is. and uh, they don't have an assistant. At the junior and, high level? Uh, at the junior high level? At all. Oh, okay. They don't have one at all. So um, they have one wrestling coach. And girls, boys, whatever. So um, I, where I looked at the other schools and there is an assistant, and I would like to recommend that we add an assistant at Keystone Heights High School for that program. Yeah. Is it just the one thing? Yes. Yes, uh, because the other was, was yeah. fine. We, <laughs> you mean we can add one assistant wrestling coach and you're going to be happy? Well, I wanted other yes. things, but he <laughs> told me no. So. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Give us your list. Uh, so, <laughs> that was my number one priority. Yeah, yeah. So I went to so, that one. So through the chair, I went <laughs> over the phone. You know, it was like a big, you know, championship victory. And uh, through, through the chair, so Mrs. Uh, Miss Tina Bullock uh, did have a uh, a good. Um, dis we had a good discussion today, rightfully so. This program was brand new at Keystone Junior Senior High School this year for wrestling. They've actually expanded this. They're doing yes. really well. So it, uh, you know, first year we didn't know if we needed an assistant or not, but they've grown and uh, absolutely to be equitable across all the schools. 
we will definitely add an assistant. I think you are absolutely cry, uh, correct. So thank you for being an advocate. Well, thank you. I appreciate yes, it. Ma'am. Cheers well, for Tina. Well, that's, looking at the this is like the fourth or fifth thing that you have advocated for. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I tell them. You're getting well, let your me way come on. here. She opens her mouth. Is what, what does Keystone she, not have? She got another band, a band director. She got another custodian. <laughs> yeah. um, Through the chair. I do not. I, you know, when I start bringing allocations and stuff, I they're always first to think about. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I said, I said, I think about them. Well, I will I'm amend my motion. Um, to include an assistant, a wrestling assistant at Keystone Junior Senior High. Okay. And I'll amend my second. Okay. I just have a question. And Ms. Stuttered, you might be the best one to ask. Do Have we always paid a percentage of the salary for a supplement? Was it ever a flat fee? Or I'm just wondering because it grows every year when uh, salaries grow. So. Thank you, Ms. Gilhausen. For many years that I have been on this board, I um, have publicly stated that our supplements are a runaway yes, train. Yes, you have. Yes, ma'am. It grows mm -hmm. and grows and grows. Mm -hmm. Now, the district has grown, so that that, right, right. that contributes to a part of it. Right. And, and, of course, you don't want to tell a teacher you don't want to not reward them some extra money Absolutely. for yeah. doing extra work. Sure. But this really um i'd just be interested in seeing how other counties do it yeah. i'd be interested to see if it's something that other counties pay a percentage of the salary mm -hmm. if it's more based on a flat fee to make it fair mm -hmm. because it's the same responsibilities regardless of what your base salary is i did um, i did oh i'm sorry no no no, no, I, no that's i apologize okay. no, i did some discussion. research last year uh -huh. because the supplements came up and as i recall <laughs> <clears throat> our superintendent was suggesting that we cut many of them out <laughs> Um, after jumping down his throat, I did a little bit more research <laughs> <laughs> and um, found that every their counties vary according. I mean, everywhere. some have a flat fee. Um, teachers who've come in from other states have said, you know, it's amazing that team leaders even get something. We were just said, hey, it's your turn this year. I mean, every county, every state is done a little bit differently. The bottom line, having been a team leader in this county... The supplements are, I think, well within what we should be giving our teachers. I don't see this as a runaway train. We can get into all sorts of comments about athletics and adding supplements to, for different programs and coaches, et cetera. Um, comparing academics and athletics is Im Impossible. not something you want to get into. Isn't, right. isn't this bargained? Supplements through, are bargained, aren't through, they? Through the chair, we identify the actual supplement, I believe, and the percentage in the funding is bargained. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So we don't want to get right. into the money. So it's a bargaining and, and, thing. Right. And Ms. Bola, do not give the public the idea that, I mean, the runaway train is something I've been talking about 15 or 20 years, mm -hmm. but it's just... I don't want anyone to think that I do not want to give them a supplement. I am just saying that when you've got what is it up to now? It's almost like three million. Yeah, two point eight. Mm -hmm. Two point eight for uh, athletics and uh, okay, two point eight. But because we lingered around this three mm -hmm. million for a good while, but I it's um, I don't know the answer to it. But uh, you want to reward your employees, but yet um, we have other needs too. Right. So. But and and remember, their employee needs. I mean, I think it's yeah. fair to say it's not that we don't want to reward, reward our employees, but right. we're, I mean, this insurance cost, we're looking at a $5 million increase. I, I just said we have a right. lot of other things that we need to be able to look at. Too. Right. Okay. Well, these supplements actually cover things that our employees are doing that affect the quality of our school district. Mm -hmm. You know, right. our athletics, our academic teams, you know, the team leaders. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, it's all truly required right. positions and and when you look at it we're not paying them nearly enough for the hours no. they all put in no, they our, our right. staff our teachers they really go above and beyond we all know that mm -hmm. and and none of us are saying not to do it right, right. i understand right. what you're saying but um we're really really um we're lucky with what we've got because we have so many that are doing it and not you know putting in so much more than what they're getting paid for mm -hmm. right. so we appreciate them Okay. 
And we voted on that already, right? No. 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 So I amended it. So we have to vote yeah. on the amended motion. Okay. The motion was by me, amended and We had by a Ms. motion Bola. by Ms. Caracas, a second by Ms. Bola on the amended motion to add the assistant wrestling coach at Keystone. Okay. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5-0. Now we'll vote on the original. The amended motion. The amended the motion we as just amended. Voted on the amended motion. The motion as amended. The we're motion. voting on now. Pardon. So now we're going to vote on the motion as amended. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. It, it didn't come up to vote for the second no, it one. Didn't. Yet. It didn't. You mm. could just do it for us, Ms. Bush. That'd be fine. Yeah. You got it. Oh, there it is. We threw our curveball there. There it is. Okay. D uh, D2, the public hearing to approve as advertised revisions and additions to policy 4.29, visits in the schools. I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone here who wishes to address the board about this item? Then I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Kirikas, second by Ms. Gilhausen. No discussion, I assume. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Next is the pro proposed allocation changes for 2018-2019. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. I'll second. I have a motion by Ms. Bola, a second by Ms. Caracas. Uh, now for discussion. This item was pulled by Ms. Gilhausen. Ms. Gilhausen, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, well, let me start by um, addressing um, some of Ms. Dixon's concerns about um, my concerns. Um, first of all, Chief Wagner, you look very sharp tonight. And um, I've had many, many conversations with our district leadership um, to understand um, what the plans are for our police department. And I'm encouraged by what I hear. I really believe um, you guys have some quality applicants. And I um, would never, ever... Um, want to degrade anybody who signs up to stand on that hard line to protect our children and our teachers and our administrators. So I applaud what you're doing. And, um, and um, any police officer, in my opinion, um, deserves our utmost respect. So um, for me, this is about, as a board member, it's a financial decision. And what Ms. Dixon um, referenced as far as how this conversation has kind of evolved from option E to option D to option C. Um, and it has. The, the money has changed. The um, proposed amounts have changed. And, you know, looking at this agenda and the money that we're spending on or potentially spending on health insurance, on supplemental packages, I mean, those are mil multi-million dollar items. And when you look at the Sheriff's most recent proposal being $3.9 million to cover our schools versus $6.1 million to do it ourselves. I see such an opportunity there to save money um, that I just, I can't in good conscience approve continuing down this path. And I know that's not news to anybody, but I just wanted to be clear on um, my thoughts because I, I would never want it to be misconstrued that I... Um, think any less of any police officer. I think you guys do a stand-up job, and I appreciate all that you do. I was looking, trying to find my paperwork. The $3.9 million you referred to of the sheriff, which proposal was that? That's the proposal that he sent to the board members where um, the, the cost is shared between the school the board. The 30 Right. Mm. Well... But the county commission would have had to pay the 30. Correct. So the total was not 3.9. Mm -hmm. 
to and the us the county it commission, was. and then he didn't take it to the county commission because he told me he didn't he think had he three had votes. three votes. From the county commission, he didn't yeah. have three votes. He said. said he didn't. He didn't think he had three votes, so he did not go to that county commission meeting with his seventy thirty proposal. Well, that's not the story that I heard. Uh, Dr. Kemp, did the sheriff go to the county commission with his seventy thirty proposal? No, he didn't. I know he didn't. Okay. No, I know he didn't go to the county commission. And why didn't he? Because the conversation that the board had indicated that we weren't interested in working with the sheriff's office, so there was no need for him to take it to the county commission if we're the ones looking for the service and we're telling him from the board floor that we don't want his services. Didn't we get an email about the, didn't think he had the three votes? I think we got an email. I don't know. No, we, I, didn't. no I didn't. I think at the end of the day, he didn't really lower his price. It was still 101 or $106,000 per resource officer as opposed to what we were paying prior to. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, what we're paying sixty one thousand. But how much so, are we paying for our school district police officers per officer? We're not paying one hundred and six thousand per officer. So, as far as I'm concerned, we're moving in the right direction. And and I understand that you want to vote no on this, and you absolutely have the right to. You know, sometimes I wish that we didn't have to work under the sunshine because there's so many things that I would love to tell you. Um, I had a long two-hour conversation with the sheriff last Friday afternoon over several cups of coffee. and um, Three big I, gulps? I had, we had a lot of big gulps. But I thought that we had come to a compromise that I had told him I would bring back to the board to see if the board would entertain it. And I thought it was worked out. And uh, from the time we left the meeting, I thought I would receive information on Monday. I haven't yet to hear one word. So uh, we need to just proceed on. We've already got 90 applicants for SROs and 30 for guardians. And um, a lot of money I too. And um uh, I think you had asked for the money, and I think up till now we've spent fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Was fifty thousand, and it had the some projected numbers there. Mm -hmm. But there comes a time. This has been going on now for. Is this the third meeting we've been talking about this? Two. But there comes a time um, that we just need to get on with business, and the majority of the board voted on this. And I know over the years, we've all been on the short end of a vote many times. No, I and, understand And what that. we're trained to do is after the, board, the majority of the board mm -hmm. takes a vote, then the entire board is to then work toward that. But every meeting, we keep getting this pushback, pushback. And I promise you, and I think you know me in my word, Ms. Gilhausen, I promise you, I offered an olive branch, and I don't even know if I could have gotten it by this board if it had happened, but I offered the sheriff an olive branch because I told him it was very important that just like we work with Green Cove and with Orange Park, that we, for the good of Clay County, for the good of the citizens, the kids, the citizens, the voters, everybody, that we need to work together collaboratively. And I even said to him, I would even like for you to come to the board meeting and we can all sing Kumbaya because we want what's in the best interest of Clay County. I left that meeting feeling on top of the world that we would, had gotten somewhere. I have been totally let down this week because I have heard not one word. And so I want you to know I stuck my neck way out and sat there for two hours, and I thought we had a good conversation. I was very disappointed that Monday came and nothing happened. Um, but there comes a time in life where we've just got to shut the door and move on now. And that's my feelings about it. So, But I wanted you to know I tried. I appreciate I that really you met tried. with him. I, I guess... If, I'm, if I put myself in his shoes, I would want to know what the whole board wanted before I went back to my team to well, create a Well, I had to proposal. have something to bring to the board. You understand? Mm -hmm. I guess. I, I don't know. I, 
I, I couldn't I couldn't go and add an item on the agenda until I knew exactly. I said I need some numbers from our conversation. What numbers? Because he's given numbers. Oh. I'm not going to get into the details. Okay, I offered fine. an I olive branch okay. so that that we could all work together. It was a win-win situation, in my opinion. Well, I'd love to know what your plan was. Well, <laughs> I think we need to vote. I think no, we need to I'm vote. I'm not going to go there because it didn't come to fruition. And you can talk to... But Dr. do you think it's too late? Yes. I do. I agree. I, have too it's much been money a week. Tomorrow will be a week. I've heard nothing. Not one word. Not so, even I've not even I've changed my mind. Nothing. Yeah. So I'm ready to go forward now. Okay. You know I've tried and I've tried and I've tried for months to sit down because I'm a big believer that if two adults sit down over a cup of coffee, you can work things out. And I thought we had, and I was just hoping that I could get three votes, but. Well, I can't tell you if I can vote that way if I don't know what... Well, you, you're not going to ever have an opportunity because it's not going to happen. Well, that's not tonight's vote anyway. It's not tonight's we're vote. We're voting to approve Well, we're voting the on those allocations. allocations. Did you have a uh, concern with this that you pulled these allocations? I just explained my concern that I feel like we I need mean, to... I mean, do you not want to approve the uh, lieutenant, uh, the training lieutenant, police officer, and police sergeant? You my, don't want to approve from, those? From the outset, my whole goal was to have the sheriff's office take over this cost okay. so that we save some money. The majority of the board has voted, so we need to move on. Okay, um, so I have a motion by Ms. Bola and a second by Ms. Caracas. Any further discussion? No. Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. Motion carries 4 1 with Ms. Gilhausen dissenting. Uh, school board attorney remarks. Mr. Bickner. Mr. Davis, do you want to have one last hoorah? I, I just want to, uh, through the chair, make sure that everyone understands the, the fair just launched today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that we'll have fair day coming up, but uh, stop by our Clay County District Schools booth and thank you to Nicole Snyder and her team for her team. Her, her team may, may be, uh, a team of one. A yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe two, maybe, maybe two. two. So, uh, you know, thank you all for putting it all together, all the schools that participated and supported and look forward to seeing you at the fair. What day is fair day? Is it uh, the, it's the next Friday, Friday. Friday. not Friday, tomorrow, Friday, the next 12. Friday. Um, I'm going to break the rules. I always go last. I'm going to go first this time. <laughs> the fair started today, ladies and gentlemen. And I then. I said that if I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> well, you stole my thunder. You always do. Okay. I'm kidding you. Uh, the fair starts today. Um, fair day is a week from tomorrow. And uh, we uh, the kids will be out of school and hopefully they'll be at the fair. And then they'll be out of school the next Friday for Good Friday, won't they? Two Fridays in a row, they'll be out. Okay, and then uh, I wanted to say, I'm, I'm glad you gave the dates and the chart for the Listen and Learns. One of the speakers tonight had asked how she could she get her questions answered. I, I wanted to say, go to a Listen and Learn. You're going to learn a lot of stuff there. And uh, But those Listen and Learns, I've only been able to go to one so far. I hope to be able to go to another one or two. But... It was phenomenal. Uh, Chief Wagner and Mr. Davis, they answered so many questions, and the people get are getting it. And they spoke at, Ro at my Rotary Club on Tuesday, and uh, they discussed this. And uh, people are understanding what this is all about. And uh, I really think y'all are to be committed. You're doing a really good job getting the word out in the community. Yeah. Okay. And... Um, Ms. Bowen and I went to Clay Day in the Tallahassee. What was it? A thousand Clay Days cookies? A thousand cookies? And they've, then, re they've refused to make that many in the future. <laughs> and then, uh, I understand. And then Nicole Snyder and Terry Dennis were there, and they had the, the uh, tent and the, what do you call that, banner wheel? Uh, what was it called? Prize wheel. We have prize wheel. And we gave away lots of 
lanyards and cups and all that stuff. And the cookies were a big hit. They were uh, the cookies were made by the culinary department at Ridgeview. Keystone. Keystone, Keystone High School, excuse me, Keystone. But they were delicious, and um, y'all did a good job until the wind blew the uh, tin away. <laughs> Brand new tin. Yeah, but it, it was a good day, and it was a, a great day to uh, spend with our legislators. And just because every time they looked at us, we said, don't forget. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, and I would be remiss. Nicole Snyder's birthday is today, and I'm not going to tell people yes. how old you are. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Happy birthday, Nicole. All right, Ms. Caracas, you go next. Um, I just want to talk about our police force. And unlike Ms. Gilhausen, the phone calls I'm getting, people are thrilled that we're moving forward with this. They're excited that we're being uh, fiscally responsible. We're creating a police force of truly professionals that will keep our students and our staff safe and also um, in the long run we'll be saving dollars. And so people are just very excited about the direction that we're moving. I've had so many attaboys. I was in the bank yesterday. One of our large business owners in the community came up and he said, you guys are doing the right thing. Just keep moving forward. And so there's been a lot of great conversation like that with people um, reaching out and saying we're doing the right thing. So we may hear some negative here and there, but I think the majority of the county is 100% behind us. And I just, Chief Wagner, it's, we're so happy to look over there and see you standing there. And just, I'm glad we're moving in the right direction. So everybody enjoy the fair. And um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Bullock. Yes, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I enjoyed uh, um, Death of a Salesman at Orange Park High School. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask for soft chairs. Oh, I next. forgot about soft that. That was wonderful. That, wonder that, was, wow. they that were, was wonderful. That was wonderful. Three Three hours. Hours. But it was good. Um, after my discussion a couple of months <laughs> back about I AMI, I got an invite to come and tour that school, and I did. I went over there, and I'm I was very thrilled to see how well it operates and even more thrilled that some of our kids are going to get to go there uh, from Keystone. Um, I um, uh, got to judge the uh, uh, Tropicana speech contest at McRae Elementary School, and that was wonderful. In fact, I saw some uh, potential students who will probably take our places in a few years, so uh, not to be concerned about that. But um, also... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, not only are you, is he visiting Rotary cl um, Clubs, he's Kiwanis. going Kiwanis as well, which I am president and a member of. That's okay. I'm holding it against you now <laughs> because we're in the south end of the county. We got left out again, but that's okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's right. I'll be there. Uh, you know, we're a big district, and we sometimes think of, you know, that our administrators only think of the, the big picture, but um, I recently had a... Um, an aide at Keystone High School who had a little uh, problem, and um, uh, Mr. McCauley and Mr. Davis jumped right in and fixed that problem, and I appreciate it very much. Yeah. Thank you. Like I say, uh, it's the individuals that are important, too, and uh, so anyway, but um, I appreciate everything. We're I'm looking for a great rig. Thank you. Amen. Ms. Bella. First of all, um, I'm assuming that Ms. Bush got in touch with you about the breakfast for the Reinhold an Foundation and asking that we start our next workshop at 10 instead of at 9 o'clock, which we normally do since this goes until 9.30. Is that the day of our agenda That's review? the day of our next agenda review. So that that's a request that yeah, throw, we we've done it in the past that yeah, way. We need to do that because yes, we need to go to that. Yes, ma'am. So chair, when we advertise it. To the chair, I'll make my, we'll make ourselves available anytime the board wishes to. If you do it. If we start at 10, will we be out by 11.30? Yes, ma'am. I'll make it happen. Okay. Because that's, that's, that's a Tuesday. That'll be yeah. Make, yeah. It, mm -hmm. make it happen. We've got lots of things mm -hmm. going Talk on fast. right here at the end of the year. Anything else, Ms. Yep. Bella? Oh, I, lists. Lists of things here. Oh, you know dear. That. Um, it's a, it was a wonderful date going to the death of a salesman, and this weekend we're going to... Bye-bye Birdie at Ridgeview High School. Ridgeview. And I know that I will be missing the 
elementary presentation at Fleming Island Elementary. I apologize. Um, a shout out to all of the young women at Oakleaf High School who will be walking in the Oak, Miss Oakleaf pageant. I have three former students who are in it, so I will be going to that Friday night and cheering for each and every one of That's them. That's the same night as Fleming Island. Right? That, correct. Um, more cheers for our students. Michael Chen, who has made the, uh, voted as the FBLA state president. I think that is absolutely awesome, and thank you for putting that in the connections, um, Nicole. I appreciate that. We have a young man who has been the FFEA state president, um, talking with and for teachers, and he's in 10th grade, if I'm not mistaken, 11th grade. 11th grade right now, he's a junior. He's been state president for two years and he's running for state president again. And I am I had the opportunity to hear him um, two days ago here at Fleming Island. We have a phenomenal group of teachers who are teachers of the year. And I don't know if you recall when you were teacher of the year, Ms. Bullock, but it was sort of that, okay, I got <laughs> voted teacher of the year and then you had the one night and that was pretty much it. And a shout out to Jessica Erlinger and Michelle Biley, who have been our county teachers of the year, um, who are really heading this up as teacher, clay teacher lead, um, setting up opportunities for all of us as teachers of the year to be able to learn from a variety of people. And on Tuesday, they had the state teacher of the year come to Fleming Island along, that is Joy Prescott. She's from Glades County. I don't know if you're familiar with Glades County at all, but they have a whopping 1,200 students in their entire county. Wow. And she is the state teacher of the year. Damn. She was absolutely phenomenal. And uh, talking about not just the academics and not just the programs, but talking about the social, emotional well-being of our children and how we can better teach our children in a social, social emotional, um, with rigor in the curriculum. That was, she kept following up. You can listen to your children. You can talk with them. You can learn about their backgrounds. You can help them. You can be there for them, but you can continue to teach. Um, along with Luis Martinez. But Joseph Anderson, here's a shout out to you as well. My gosh, what an impressive young man. He was the first speaker for us. And I sat there and I thought, I want him as my teacher someday. <laughs> I mean, he was absolutely awesome. Um, yes, I am volunteering to go on that Jacksonville Zoo field trip. I think that would be a hoot. I wouldn't mind going with Ridgeview High School to New York City next year. They're going there. Um, and I got a message from Mr. Summers. You met his wife this evening. Um, Mr. Summers is taking the Oakleaf Band, Oakleaf Junior High Band, to the Carowinds Band Festival um, in Charlotte, North Carolina next year. So we could set up all sorts of wonderful road trips. Supporting our students, I'm just saying that as an option. Mm -hmm. um, listen and learn. Some of the things, it's amazing. What I found in the, I've gone to the two listen and learn so far, one here in Fleming Island and one at Oakleaf. Mm -hmm. And the questions from the families have been incredibly unique. Mm -hmm. And it just shows the diversity in this county and opened my eyes to the concerns of the families in this county and the, and the variety of different concerns that they have. Um, but I will be continuing to attend because at each one, even though I could probably give your shtick, I think I know what both of you say, <laughs> um, you still learn something new. And mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to meet so many of the people that we represent. Last but not least, we are entering bargaining next week. And I just, I think about that and my heart clinches. I just, I want to do, I know we all, want to do so much more than we possibly can. And I would like to reach out to you, Mr. Davis, Mr. Broski, and I really hope that, and I can say this from Mary Bola's perspective, and I, you may all agree as well, but I would like us to take an aggressive stance, an aggressive stance towards assistance with medical insurance this year in whatever we do and however we are able to do it. We have to help. 
I've sat on the insurance committee now for one whole year. Well, not even, a couple of months. <laughs> and I, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it, it feels like, no, actually it was, it was, it was eye-opening. You, you, you really don't realize what the insurance companies are doing for us. It sounds like they're just stocking us with all sorts of additional um, insurance costs, but what they are doing to absorb so many of those costs is amazing, truly amazing. So thank you for the work that you're doing as well, by the way. Um, but I think that's it. Bye-bye, Birdie, Saturday night. <laughs> and I don't want to say too much, but I have a feeling that your comment about insurance if that was a vote right now, there'd be a 5-0 vote quickly. Mm -hmm. But if uh, Ms. Gilhausen, your turn. Um, I had the privilege of attending several events throughout the um, school district this last month. But I think one of my favorites was right here at Fleming Island High School doing mock job interviews with our <laughs> students and really seeing um, they bring their A game. And there were a couple of them. If I had a job to give them, they would have had it. <laughs> so um, those CTE folks have a lot to be proud of and what they're accomplishing with kids every day. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, I know, I'm sure, Dr. Legutko is already looking into building the budget for this coming fiscal year. Um, and with the millage money, I know... Uh, Mr. Davis made a presentation to us about a proposal for how we should budget that, and I think we owe it to our district leadership as a board to decide um, where that money should fit in our budget. So I don't know if you guys feel like a workshop's necessary for that or if it's um, how you want to go about discussing it, but I, I think it's important, and I think we need um, to do it sooner rather than later as we're looking to the next fiscal year. And we're talking about bargaining, That's so right. you know That's all exactly that right. all that needs to be. What do y'all feel would be the best time frame on that? Maybe May. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would. I. I, I know that we're not getting this money technically until December. Right. Yeah. Um, however, I've been asking for a similar yes, workshop and have. saying we need to come up with a plan. Right. So that this money is not taken for granted. And while um, we're looking... The sooner the better from my perspective. I, I, I'll say May. I don't know. I almost wish that we could do something sooner we because... Have all this end of school stuff. I understand, but this is critical. Yeah. Right. And, well, and our, we're our fiscal year reset's in... Yeah. Is it July? June 1? July, July 1. What's the July 1. Maybe do the first week. Um, so I think that's something we need to consider. And the other thing I think we need to discuss is... The potential growth over the next ten years for our county. We we need a workshop yeah, on that yep, and certainly. how we're going to budget for that. How we're going to plan for that. Um, you know, we we can. I think we need spreadsheets. I think we need to really dig deep. And um, I don't I don't want to be accused. 20 years from now, those idiot school board members who knew what was coming and didn't do anything to get ready for it. So, um, you know, I, I think we need a workshop on that. And that, that can be later in the fall or over the summer, maybe when there's not so much going on in the school district. Well, but well, we you normally... know, I was thinking if we, if we were going to do something in May, we need to do it kind of toward the front end of the first part of May, because you know how it's going to get right there toward the end of school. There's mm -hmm. Things start happening. Right. Uh, could, could could we do it the same day as our workshop on the seventh? I was 7th? just going to say, if we, if is it possible to start the workshop at eight thirty? I know you have time constraints. Uh, no, I can get there at eight thirty. If we started at eight thirty, at least be, we could make what an day initial. Would that be? That's May seventh. Uh, May May twenty eighth for the workshop for the. Oh. To like discuss the village. The, I was saying if we backed you're get, it up you're to the, the week you're of right. graduation. Yeah, that's the week of graduation. And Class I, it nine. seems like we got and something the other day that was on the 28th. They're off on the 27th. The agenda workshop is on the 28th. And what I'm suggesting okay. is that we start the agenda workshop a half hour earlier at 8.30. We would be done probably by 9.30, 10 at the latest. That would give us an hour, possibly an hour and a half, to at least make some initial inroads into looking at do you think that's enough time an hour and a half should we start at 
Like, this is probably going to, I would imagine this is going to take more than one and workshop. All y'all can do that's what yes. I'm saying. So, so I think an in initial, yeah. initial workshop <laughs> on the 28th at 830, I think is great. I think I that's mean, a great place start, to start. And, and if we got done with the earlier. <laughs> and I like to invite you to Keystone to do that. <laughs> so, that's fine. So, <laughs> I don't care so where through we the chair. The yeah. When you have it at eight. Through but the chair. The entire team so this, so this works, first workshop will be on millage plan. Is that the correct? Is that correct? Is that what you want? That's the millage, millage kind plan, of. Yeah. Is is it just the millage, or are well, we just talking budget? Yeah. Well, was, I think we need to discuss specifically the millage so that she knows how to build the budget. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Whether to include that in certain costs or not, or if we need a separate fund. You know what I'm saying? I, I think, agree. Well, okay. we could start there. Mm -hmm. Like you say, it's going to take more than one time to right. work through this. So. If we say on the 28th of May, mm -hmm. uh, we'll start the agenda review at 8.30, and then we'll, uh, hopefully that'll be over in about an hour, and then we'll start in on the uh, millage, for lack of better, millage plan workshop, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Mm -hmm. That works. And, okay. Is that good? Mm -hmm. And okay. as I said, it's just a start. I mean, this, right. it, this is it a probably start. would take yeah. more than that. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I know we all have... There's as many priorities as there are people sitting in the room, so yep. I, I, it's yep. going to take a while. But okay, any more comments from the board? Okay, then the meeting is adjourned.